America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood. Hey, from sea to shining sea. Hey, youngest grandpa here. You know, I haven't said anything about our military youngins in a while. Oh, it's time. I want to thank all my youngins out there that are in the service. From the cook, to the man cleaning the johns, to the foot soldiers, to the ones that are up all night protecting my fat ass while I sleep. I want to thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. I love all you people. I love all your families. Your families, man, they're the backbone of this country. They, they allow you the opportunity to serve me and these other assholes out here. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, but I can't say much for the Pentagon. Them some stupid motherfuckers. What the fuck? Old men up there, they ain't caring nothing about you. They're caring about what they can take away from you. They're caring about how they can save where they're going to go this weekend and how much money they're going to spend. And they don't even want to give y'all enough to go to the fucking grocery store. Hell, a lot of you military people out there living on goddamn food stamps and shit. And you shouldn't have to. This country should supply everything you and your family needs. Don't happen, though. Got a friend of mine. Named James Rich, uh, Richards, I think it is. He's one of my youngins. He was in the Marine Corps. And he spent four years, and all of a sudden, they're going to they they put him out the service. You know, this man didn't want to leave the Marines. He wanted to stay. He wanted to serve his country. He wanted to devote his time to for our freedoms. Well, Grandpa thinks they should have let him stay. No, our stupid fucking Pentagon leaders and everybody else says, no, this man, we've done trained him. He knows how to do everything. He knows how to fill the paperwork out. He knows how to, to run things. and. Well, we're just going to let him go. We're going to bring in somebody new who don't know nothing. And we're going to spend three, four hundred thousand dollars training that son of a bitch. You got a man right here that already knows the damn job. Why not let him stay? Why not let him re-up? What is wrong with you people? You know, this country's in the hell of a mess. There's no money. And you dumb... <sighs> Y'all rather take three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars and train somebody to do the same job this man's doing, instead of letting this man stay in a job that he knows how to do with a beloved core that he loves. Now, if if he in his four four years, if he wanted to get out, then fine, have a good life, man. Go do what you need to do with your life. But they put his they build put they put his ass out. And then they got some young fella, and I ain't got nothing against him, you know. Look, we're going to have wars forever. We're always going to have a battle somewhere. So why not keep the ones that know what they're doing, you stupid asses in fucking the Pentagon? I don't, you know, I don't have to kiss your asses. I don't have to. I'm a civilian, so that's what I think about you. That's like we took on the, took on Iraq, you know. When they closed the Pizza Hut and they closed the Burger King and all you youngins started raising hell with the Pentagon because Grandpa told you to. A few days later, they reopened the Pizza Hut. They reopened the Burger King. And and things like, you know, and and, 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 and you give them back what they want. You give them back their internet. You, you even took away their internet so they couldn't even talk to their families no more. That is wrong. That is definitely wrong. So anyway, God, I, I, people, I want to help James get back in the, in, the, in the Marine Corps. And I need all y'all to help me. His name is James, James Rick, Rick, uh, Richards, I think he said. Man, we need to start calling him. Man, putting him back in the dam where he belongs. And I'm going to tell you, sir, any of you guys that want to stay, fight for your right. Get your goddamn lawyer if you have to. 
If you don't want to go and you want to stay, fight it. Anything can be won, youngins. All it takes is power. And Grandpa's army, we got power. We've proven that time and time again. Anyway, you youngins take care. Grandpa will be back tomorrow. And military guys and gals and families, I love you. From the bottom of my heart, I support you. And people that don't support you can kiss my fat ass. Hey, youngins. Grandpa here. You know, this week's going to mark an anniversary of there was a little festival, you know, that they were having in New York called Woodstock. And old grandpa, I was a young fella back then. And we were hanging on the beach, you know, having fun, you know, back in 69. That's all the hell we did was have fun anyway. But but one of my friends both to come up and say, yeah, hey man, look at hey, oh, oh, Tiny, that's what they called me, because I was a big motherfucker back then. Tiny, I'm going to New York, meet a couple guys, man. You want to go? I was, about, I was high anyway. I think I done done dropped about three beauties, and I think I, I done dropped a little mescaline too, come to think of it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, man, I'm in for that shit, man. Just, just, let's go, man. Anyway, man, the next day we got up, we took off to, that, to New York. Had a little old VW bus, you know what I'm saying? Had, had, we had Paisley shit drawn all over it, you know, and colored, you know, and we took along a little bit of micro dot. And <laughs> I ain't shit you, man. We had some goddamn weed that would knock you to your fucking knees. See, we left that morning, man. I'm all smoked up, you know. I've been smoking that shit for like hours, you know. Dun, dun, I was getting stoned. I wasn't even getting out. I was stoned on my ass. That's what, that's what we're going to be talking about this week. Every day I'm going to be li talking a little bit more about Woodstock. And I'm going to start with, I used to hang out at a place called Folly Pier. On Folly Beach, South Carolina. And every Friday and Saturday night, man. There was, they always had a band, man. They, you know, Maurice Williams and the Zodiacs. The Swinging Medallions. Well, I kind of outgrew that shit, man. I got more into Arlo Guthrie and Three Dog Night and all the rest of this shit. Man, I, I, man goddamn. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and I was a stoner. I ain't gonna lie about it. Hell, I'm still a stoner. Goddamn. You got any weed? I'll share it with your ass. Uh, you know what the most popular word in the world is? Ear. <laughs> ear. Ear. Ear, man. Anyway. We, you know, we left Folly Beach and we took off, man, and told my mom, called my mom and said, Mom, I'm going out of town for a few days. She said, you ain't old enough to call. Man, fuck, I'm going out of town, Mom. I'm going to New York. We started out, man. There was like three of us in the bus. We went down. We, 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 got, we, got, we got going through North Carolina, you know, and all that shit. And found some goddamn hippies thumbing, you know. We pick them up. Where you going? We're going to Woodstock, man. Before it's over, before we got to Woodstock, I swear to God, we had that bus full. And half of them stunk like shit. Oh my God. Ain't had a bath in a fucking month. I, ain't, I can't forget that smell. But anyway, didn't really matter because I was fucked up anyway. So we traveled on, man, and, 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 you know, we got our music playing, you know, and we all get fucked up with Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. You couldn't beat them back in the day, man. So we decided, we, we, we on the road, you know, and we traveling, and goddamn bus breaks down. Two flat fucking tires. Say, Bugs, why didn't you, where's your spares? I ain't got no spares, man. Well, what the fuck we supposed to do? We stuck out here in goddamn redneck country, man, with motherfuckers. They don't have damn uh, motherfucking rod and reels in their damn ready rifle racks, you know, in the back of the trucks. Motherfuckers had shotguns, you know. They ain't like no hippie. My hair was like way down my shoulders, you know. I had my goddamn beard growing. I wore sandals. Had a pair of scissors, like a uh, pants on, man. They come about that far above my ankles, you know. And, I was a fucked up son of a bitch. Whew. Had these two girls in the band with, but I don't want to talk about them. You know, we 
They were real friendly though, trust me. They they appreciated the ride. But we had a good time, man. We you know we were I don't even remember even getting to New York. I know when we did get there, man, there was so goddamn many people. You know, we heard there was gonna be like maybe 20, 30,000, you know? Fuck that shit. They motherfuckers were everywhere. Goddamn hippies were coming out the fucking ant hills. Never gonna forget that. There were people thumbing everywhere, man, walking, carrying their guitars. Uh, got up to the gate, no gate. The goddamn, the, the, the people done, done trampled down the fucking fence and done gone on in. Shit, help myself, walk right on in too. Getting back, see, I'm getting off a damn story now. You know, anyway, we got tired. We, we were in a little small town, you know, and we all put together enough to buy us two used tires. They were bald as shit, but we found two tires. Just when we got almost to goddamn Woodstock, the fucking bus just broke the fuck down. So we had to walk, and that's when we just went on through the gate, you know, and had that damn stage was fucking awesome. It was like massive, you know. We got there like early that morning, and the shit wasn't gonna start till that night. So we just kind of set up tent, smoke some more dope, smoke some dope, smoke some dope. Oh, listen to the people while they say, gonna drop the mescaline every day. Smoke the dope. Anyway, <laughs> I'm having fun with this, folks. Y'all just. If you don't like it, don't watch me. I don't give a shit. I, I'm thinking about back during the day, man. Back back when when the Vietnam War was going on, you know, and had a lot of friends got drafted, you know, and they went over there and, and, and they fucking died. I still think about some of them today, you know. They were friends, man. They were fun to be with. They smoked as much dope as we did. But when they went to service, they went they went from the dope to the booze, you know, and drinking that fucking beer off, that 3.2 beer the fucking army has. You got in the military, y'all know about that 3.2 beer, right? <sighs> Lost a lot of good friends in Vietnam. I think that's one reason why I was really against the war in Vietnam, because it wasn't a declared war. It was a police action. They never came out and said, we declare war on Vietnam. No, we went over there, the police area and ended up doing all the fighting and we ended up with all the major men dying. Damn. I know Mike is going to edit the hell out of this thing, but I don't give a damn. I'm just going to talk. I think about, I, I think about we got to Woodstock, man, you know, and there were signs there where, you know, ban the bomb, uh, make love, not war, uh, free love. Yeah, it was a lot of free love, too. Shit, I walked down the aisle, man, between these people, you know, that old guy, he was fucking, he was like fiending out, man. He wanted to hit so fucking bad. <clears throat> hey, man, hey, man, what? You got any dope? Yeah, I got a little bit. Man, give me some dope, man. I'll give you my old lady, man. You can have her ass. I took one look at that bitch and said, fuck, you can just have the dope, man. I don't want her. Hell no. Ooh. And that was that was when our, that was when we first got there. The next one I'm gonna come on, boy, I'm gonna be telling you about when Jimi Hendrix got there and played the Star Spangled. And if you ain't never heard it, Google it right now. Jimi Hendrix played Star Spangled Banner at Woodstock. Moving as hell, you. It, it gets you going. Think about it this week, both. Think, ask your mom and dad what, what were they doing back in 69. Hey, youngest, it's me again. Grandpa, how the y'all done? <laughs> Man, this week I'm, I'm remembering Woodstock. Told you yesterday about how we got, how, what made us decide to go. We had nothing to do and <laughs> enjoy drugs anyway. But anyway, we got to Woodstock. And there were so many goddamn people. The the bus broke down. When I say bus, I mean VW bus, Volkswagen. They had had little had little paisley signs painted on them. They were different colors, you know, and psychedelic shit. And we got there, boy. We were fooling around, you know. We made our little tent. And we were all having a ball, you know. Had people out there with their guitars. Bugs had his, and they were singing, having a good time, you know. 
and all of a sudden the goddamn rain come. Man, I, never, I ain't never seen so much rain in my life. And we were in that open field, and with all them people walking, man, there was mud everywhere. And nowhere, nowhere to take no bath, you know. So, but I'll get to that part shortly. But anyway, yeah, it was it was bad, man. That, I mean, all the mud, all the rain, all the damn people. No bath at the bathrooms. Oh my God, I'd rather be like a bear and shit in the woods. Couldn't go in them bathrooms, man. They were horrendous. They had to bring more damn porta potties out there. But we're there, man. I mean, helicopters flying all over, leaving and coming, leaving and coming, leaving and coming. Should I have said coming and leaving, coming and leaving, coming and leaving? I don't know. What the fuck? I'm retarded, you know? Excuse me, people that I've been saying retarded. I'm a flapper, okay? But anyway, we're out there, man. We're all dancing, man. We're all fucked up. We're all doing drugs. We're all... I was hired and I goddamn... Oh, my God. I was so spaced out. And I made a lot of good friends out there, man. There were, there were a lot of people out there like me that, you know... But poor families, but we didn't give a damn. The ones that had rich, hell, they didn't give a damn because they were just like us. Most of those families done kicked into the street because they were hippies. Yeah, I was a hippie, youngins. We're sitting there, man, all of a sudden it starts. Man, let me tell y'all something. Y'all ain't heard nothing though, Jimmy. He's come out. Down, 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 down. And you be about high on mescaline? Oh my God, that shit reverbed right through your ass. You didn't know what to do, man. You were like, oh my God, man. Oh, can you feel the music, man? You know, colors all up in the motherfucking air and you know, little, little tiny men walking around in your mind and shit. We did some bad shit, man. But yeah, man, you know, the bands like Cut to Joe and the Fish, Arlo Guthrie, um, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. I, I mean, what was there not to fall in love with at Woodstock? The music was good. Trust me, it was all about the music. But the people were the funniest things. You had people walking around there, man, with, you know, <laughs> seeing little, little, little shit running around. They all fucked up, you know. Laying there on the goddamn ground, all in a goddamn fetal position, man. They so fucked up. Now, I'm not advocating taking drugs. Now, I'm telling you now, you ought not take no drugs. But back in that time in my life, man, everybody smoked weed and got fucked up. Uh, the police didn't even fuck with us out there at Woodstock, man. They, they just, they were there. They were there for a while, but they kind of left because <laughs> they weren't wanted. And what were they going to do anyway? There were goddamn, you know, thousands of us there. But the, the music went on, man. It was like late in the morning, late in the night, man. And all of a sudden the music stopped. And all of a sudden you started seeing little, little, little campfires striking up here and there. And you heard music coming from this camp, that camp. Uh, Woodstock was awesome. You will never, you, you can never experience the, the, what it was like unless you were there. To me, Woodstock taught me a lot in life that I kind of kept, I still keep. I, you know, I still got things about Woodstock that I learned that's still in my heart today. Like the free love though, boy, I'll tell you one, there was plenty of free love there. You know, just, and the thing was, there was no fights. If there was, I didn't hear about them. The, Everywhere I went, man, everybody was all about the music and and, and love and and stopping the war and 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 what can we do to, to make this a better world? And wow, I said a lot with that one, didn't I? But youngins, all kidding aside, tomorrow I'm gonna get more into tomorrow I'm gonna get more in, into what went behind the scenes, what was going on in the crowd. So tomorrow I'm gonna tell y'all about some of the some of the the color of the people that was there, and, and some of the things that the people were doing. So I'll talk to y'all tomorrow, youngins. Bye. I brought you here because I want you to see what's happening. You haven't been out here since you moved. Yeah. Look, look over here. Look around. Span out in there for me. All the trailers that are missing now. Turn around, man. Get these up behind you.
trailers are missing. It used to be so packed. Every, every, every place had a trailer. These were a thriving community. People were yes. living here. Remnants of residents that are gone. Yeah. I mean, look at this trailer here, man. The people, they, 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 they had to move. The trailer wouldn't move. Those things were caught on fire. Michael, it was caught on fire. They couldn't move it. What do you expect them to do? You don't understand, man, what's going on here, okay? We got a governor. I get it. Yeah, we, we got a governor that, that that gets up there and she tells a National Republican Convention. Do one now. Yeah, pulling one out of here. Hey, I know you listen to me. I'm talking. I understand. I'm not with Nikki She gets Haley up there. Right? That goddamn Nikki Haley says, Boeing came to South Carolina and they didn't, they didn't, they didn't hurt one family, not one person. I'm one person, Michael. They hurt the fuck out of me. They hurt me. You they were raised. Them. You were raised in that trailer we lived in. I guess you're not somebody. You don't I'm not somebody. I don't count. I guess Nikki Haley. I don't count for nothing. Tell you right now, Michael. If Nikki Haley was standing right here in front of me right now, like you are, I say, you know something, Nikki Haley? You ain't worth a shit. I'm a goddamn. You don't need to win the election. You don't need to win nothing. Okay. Can stand that goddamn woman. Hey, I'm with you on this, dude. Seriously. She does not need to be the governor of okay, South Carolina. Calm down. She does not need, she don't even qualify for a woman. Okay, I get you. We all know how she got to the top. Okay. Slipped around a little bit. How can our governor get up there and say that Boeing didn't hurt us? You know what Boeing needs to do? Boeing needs to go to everybody that lives in this goddamn trailer park and give them a couple thousand dollars apiece for having them relocate. But no, Bowen, them cheap son of a bitches, that cheap goddamn governor of ours, she got her money. And she gets her goddamn money. The poor people here don't get nothing. Fucking nothing, Michael. Sick of this shit. Sick of this goddamn government. I'm sick of Governor Haley. The bitch needs to move on. South Carolina. Beautiful places, smiling faces. Yeah, she's smiling all the way to the fucking bank because I guarantee you, boy, give her a big fucking check. This is, this is bad, man. This is fucking bad. Thank you, Governor Haley. Thank you, boy, for ruining families, for ruining lives. I hate you. I fucking hate you. You got somewhere, Dad. Oh, yeah, but goddamn, I paid out the ass. Come here. It's all right. No, it's fucking. No, it's good. That goddamn Governor Haley, man. Does. You don't care about people. I ain't got no, man, I lost my home, man. My home was paid for it. Hey, I'm talking to you. You want to pay attention to me? I just look at the trailer. No, you pay attention to me. I just just consoled I'm telling you. you about the trailer park. I'm telling you about the goddamn governor. I'm with you. I think we, I think the goddamn army needs to start calling the goddamn governor. Yeah, do that. Call. I think the, guard, the, guard, the army needs to start calling the state capital of South Carolina. The number's fucking here. It's there. Number is right here. Cut yourself on this trailer? Probably get typhoid. I need your army. We don't count, no, we don't count as people. Oh, that's right. We don't count as people because Bowie never didn't hurt people. We're not humans. We're not anything. I guess unless we make over a certain pay grade, we don't count. Are you up there in the political, in the Republican national something? The army, back me up. Let's back me up, army. I'm telling you, I want your phone calls. I want your Twitters. I want everything to Boeing. Uh, asshole Haley. What are we supposed to do? We can't sleep our way to the top. Grandpa needs y'all back him up now. I ain't lying. They need to compensate us. Boeing, you know, they got a rep bad reputation anyway. They'll build a plane. Part of it fell on the damn airport tarmac. What about us? I mean, I, that's what I What about all these people? They're losing every fucking thing. And, and most of these trailers can't be moved. I don't understand, man. They need to help us out, son. I, hey. Did you fucking read? Huh? Can you fucking read? What does that say? Don't toes? No, there's the H right here in the fucking white. Can you read? I guess so. Don't touch. And hey, where are you going? What? You kicked me out of the chute. You were messing with somebody's goddamn property. They tell you not to touch and you're going to touch. I was just touch. Ain't you got respect even though ain't nothing but a piece of shit trailer? Ain't, ain't, ain't you got no goddamn respect? Don't you call it a piece of shit? That was well, a look, call. that is a piece of shit. If you want to cook for grandpa, all you need is a goddamn hammer and a pound of bacon. <laughs>
it's time for cooking with grandpa and I am doing something that you all cook at least once or twice a week chicken nuggets and I'm taking if I can hold on to the goddamn box what the fuck if I can hold on to the box oh wrong side stuffing and of course bacon everything what the hell everything is cooked with bacon everything so this is gonna be something new and I want y'all to look at it and y'all ain't gonna get all funny shit digging this is good so hang on I'll see if I can get this where y'all can see it you take a chicken nugget and you slice that motherfucker open in half whatever you fucking want to do I don't give a shit but just make sure it's good and open right then you take some stuffing good amount and you wrap that back around it then you take the bacon now I'm using different bacon I'm using a bigger bigger wider bacon this time and just roll that motherfucker up And that's what you end up with. The grease is getting hot. So let's. You don't need a whole lot of grease because bacon's gonna make his own grease. You know that. I mean, duh, you ain't retarded. Some of you are. And we let that sucker cook. Yeah. Bacon, bacon, tastes real good. Tastes just like a bacon should. But it's a quick, easy meal. Cost me what? Two dollars for the damn dollar and a half for the dressing. A couple of bucks for the bacon. And you can get a whole lot out of it. A whole lot. Unless you're a fat fuck, then you, it, it ain't going far at all. You know what I'm saying? If you eat a lot, you ain't gonna get shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I'll be back in a minute when these start getting done. I'll pull them out and show you what they look like. Man, god damn, this old pot just keeps on burning. All right, youngins, there it is. And there goes my text. Anyway, got the, the, the chicken tender. Man, god damn, hang on. You got your chicken nugget with the stuffing and the wrapped in bacon fried. Just pick up a jalapeno, put it on there, and just take a bite out that. That shit is delicious, so y'all try it. Try it Grandpa's way. If you don't like it, I don't really don't give a shit, but it's good. See you on the next one. Bye. Grandpa here. This is a random vlog. This is an I don't give a shit. Kiss my ass. Whatever. Grandpa's reached the point where shit's got to change in his life. Got to change. And the only one going to change shit in my life is me. You know, you, you can't have other people change your life for you because it ain't going to work. Unless you're ready to settle down and change your life yourself, your life's going to stay the same. What do you want to do with your life? You want money, you want happiness, you want love, you want a big family, just what do you want out of life? It's up to you. You can have anything you want, youngin', but you need determination. Well, damn, I just used a big word, didn't I? Because believe it or not, I do like doing my vlogs. They're fun. I say what I want. If you don't like it, <laughs> bite my ass. I got the damn governor of South Carolina mad with me now. I care. I care less about old dumber. You know, Grandpa wants to run for me. I think I'll run for governor. Y'all think I'd win if I run for governor? Hell no. But maybe they would listen to us. Maybe we... 
Maybe if we had an agenda, people would honestly listen to us. Who that texting me? Hang on a minute, youngins. God damn. JC! Nana's here! Jay! Go get JC! Run, get JC! Okay. Hang on. He's coming. There's your problem. Goodbye. Come on, Jacob. Get Jacob. Go to showing her fucking ass like she always does. I don't want no goddamn cat. Why? Yeah, you go. Take your whore ass up the street. My honey, the horse right there. My Get your ass out of here. The horse. Right you can go or I'm calling the police and you can go to jail. Go ahead. Mom, and I'll turn you and her in for her running from the cops. Go ahead. Mom, and I will. Would you get out of here? Mom, no, I'll mom. kill you myself if you come near me. Get out of here, you big. What? Honey, stop. Mom, you better get rid of her, Jennifer. You better get rid of her. Bridget. Tell her to get the fuck out of here. Fuck her. Grandpa here, you know, I watched that damn Republican convention, and I watched the Democratic convention, and learned nothing new. Oh, and by the way, I'm doing a lot better now, folks. I'm going, I'm going the day after tomorrow and have a stress test done and all that, but I'm doing good now, so we're just going to leave it at that. You know, a lot, a lot of things that happen, a lot of ungrandpa and a lot of stress, but... I call that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, Grandpa's made the decision that this year I'm going to support, and I mean this with all my heart. I, I, I have thought about the candidates running. You know, Odama and uh, Dick Romney, Prick Romney, whatever you want to call him. And I decided that I'm going to vote for me. Write my name in on the ballot, youngins. I'm the only one, I can do a better job than damn Obama. I mean Obama or whatever the hell his name is. And Mitt Romney, that motherfucker's just like a little kid out there sucking on a lollipop, not wanting to share shit. So can't vote for him. Can't vote for o Obama. Don't know anybody else is running. And I figure I'm the logical goddamn person to run for president. Vote for me! Let me see what else I gonna do. Definitely gonna boost up our military because we need that. We need to support our military with everything we got. Without our military, man, we're nothing. We don't have military, they gonna the other countries just gonna run the hell over us. We can't have that. Vote for me! Subliminal thoughts or some shit. Vote for grandpa. 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 So when it comes time to bat the vote, waste, you know, you're gonna waste your vote anywhere you go, because Odama ain't done a damn thing since he's been in office. I really can't think of one thing he's done to help this country. I think he's made a lot of money. And then you got Mitt Romney, that he only cares about Republicans and he don't care about all the people, he don't care about the poor people. And if he does, I've never seen it. People like me and you ain't got to say so in this country no more. They don't listen to us. Man, 
let me get the fuck over this lake. God damn. Get out of my way! Alright. Yeah, you come over and I'll come over, prick. So, Grandpa, I'm going to run for president. And I'm going to start doing some goddamn vlogging on that shit. Let me do I'll think, uh, who's going to be my vice president? Hell, I don't need one. I'll do it all by my goddamn self. Boba Grandpa! Boba Grandpa! Just write my name in on your ballot. Angry Grandpa for president. That sounds good, don't it? Uh, da, 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 da. The President of the United States, Angry Grandpa, AGP. Hey Americans, how you doing? I, I'm your president. I'm gonna push we legalize marijuana. It's a goddamn herb, it's weed, it grows. Yeah, yeah, you, and you know what else we're gonna do too? We're gonna, we, we're gonna make this a one religion country. <laughs> I know that sounds stupid to people, but you know something? It sounds about as stupid as voting for Obama or voting for Mitt Romney. You ain't got a choice. Think about it, people. Think about it. There's nobody to vote for, so why vote? I'm not. I'm not voting this year. But if I do, I vote for me. Vote for Grandpa. Vote for Grandpa. Bye, youngins. Hey, youngins! Yeah, what the book's that on my hand? Hmm, who knows? Grandpa here! You know, I seen something, you know, I'm always talking about Dora the Explorer and Sponge Booby and, and that fucking freaky ass Max and Ruby and. Well, today I gotta, I, I gotta talk about SpongeBob. I saw the freakiest shit ever on SpongeBob two days ago. Now, you know, I got grandboys and they watch Sponge Booby. And that dumbass Patrick and that cheap shit Krusty Krab or whatever his name is. Somebody came along and they wanted a goddamn ice cream float. So the fish looked at old, old, old SpongeBob and said, I want an ice cream float and I want some whipped cream on top. That freaky goddamn SpongeBob took a fucking float glass. Put it between his legs on the floor and looked like some kind of goddamn shit was coming out of his ass, filling up the float thing. Then all of a sudden, all kind of white shit started coming out the same hole as his ass, looked like his ass, putting on top of that. Is that what we want our youngins to learn? That ice cream floats come out of a goddamn SpongeBob's ass? His ass, people! And that goddamn fish is slapping it up like a motherfucking lap dog. What the hell is wrong with goddamn people these days? We allow our children to watch that shit. And SpongeBob, you know, I, Grandpa, no lie now, I got no problem with gays. Not at all. Everybody needs to live their own life. But SpongeBob and Patrick adopt a little motherfucking, I think it was a starfish, something like that. No, not a star. Anyway, a clam. That's what it was. Motherfuckers adopted a clam. And Patrick was that like he was going to work. He was that like your typical father. Don't do shit all day long as I'm sitting on his ass and tell his old lady he's working. Motherfucker ain't got a job from hell. You know, you be the baby daddy. Anyway, Patrick coming home and old SpongeBob, oh, he's having to take care of the clam and wash dishes and clean the clothes and sweep the floor and change shitty little diapers from the fucking clam. And then what happens? I see very next goddamn scene. Here comes SpongeBob and Patrick. I guess his name is SpongeBob E. SpongeBob E had a little parasol and a dress and. Come on, man, that's, that's flaming. SpongeBob was flaming. And I know I'm going to get a lot of goddamn hate shit on this, you know, but I don't care. I'm, I'm Grandpa. What the fuck? I'm old. Who gives a shit? Why do we allow shit like this on TV? Why, you know, is it, has the TV become our goddamn babysitter now? Used 
to be man when I was a little, little feller boy. My mom and daddy said, get out of that yard and play. I don't want to play. I want to watch goddamn. I want to eat some Wonder Bread and watch Mighty Mouse. Get your ass out in that yard and play, boy. I ain't telling you again. I'm going to take this stick and switch across your ass. Nowadays, it's go sit in front of the TV, darling, and watch Spongebob. Gee, Jerome, why don't you go watch Dora the Explorer? Maybe you can learn to speak a little Spanish. Maybe they need to learn to speak a little English. I mean, this is America. We do, our, English is our damn national speech over here. You know, I know a guy, he, he, he acts just like fucking Spongebob. Motherfucker, the flapper. A fucking flapper! And when I say flapper, I don't mean gay, I mean the motherfucker's retarded. Oh, I'm gonna catch it again, good God almighty. See, like every time I open my mouth, man, I'm getting goddamn catching hell for shit I say. But you know something? I don't care. <laughs> I don't really give a shit. If I feel it, I'm gonna say it. If you don't like it, bite my ass. Yeah, 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 I know what you're saying out there, but I love you anyway, because y'all my youngins. And y'all tolerate my old fucking ass. That's what it is. Y'all let me get away with a lot of shit just because you tolerate me. Tolerate! Bye, youngins. Hey, youngins. Grandpa here. Like you don't know who the fuck I am, right? You know, Grandpa gonna tell y'all a story. Damn old lens. Getting messed up. I just cleaned it. I'm pretty now. You know, this is a story I don't want to tell. This is a story that scares the shit out of me when I think about it. Many years ago, I had a hernia, and it was the size of a fucking basketball. Damn lens, I swear to God. It was the size of a basketball. I had to take it out. And they told me there was going to be complications. Damn, I don't like telling this story. Anyway, the doctor said I was going to be in the hospital for three, four weeks. Which, I needed the rest anyway. Anytime you can get away from grandma for that long, it's a good rest. Anyway, they, 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 they took that hernia out. They lost me on the table. I died. Man, I keep doing this shit. It ain't even cold. It must be cold in my house. Anyway. They, he took the hernia, he repaired the hernia, you know. I didn't quite come back, because they lost me. And this went on for like three weeks. One day, man, they and I was I was in a coma. One day they tell they tell the old lady, they say, you know, you really ought to think about going to the funeral home and making arrangements. He said, because we don't think he's gonna make it. My blood pressure was high, my damn heart was giving them problems. Mostly my lungs, you know, much as I smoked, my lungs were all fucked up anyway, you know what I'm saying? So, old grandma, you know, she went down to the funeral home and she was talking to him. This went on for like three weeks, finally. All of a sudden, man, my daughter came from fucking New York, Kimberly. And everybody done give me up for dead. My daughter started, God damn you, daddy. Wake your fat fucking ass up, you son of a bitch. Who the fuck you think you are? You gonna leave all of us and we gonna be alone without you? Wake your old ass up. Dad, I love you. We all love you. Wake up. I woke up. Ah, I get missed to tell the story. Nurse told Kimberly, she said, I became running in the room because my damn 
They had me hooked up the monitors that was showing outside in the damn nurse's station. And all of a sudden, vital signs started coming back. I had a pulse again. I was living. They went in and Kimberly said, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to upset him. Nurse said, hell no, you do whatever it is you're doing because you, you're making him wake up. Hard story to tell. And there I was. My eyes were open. I was looking around at my daughter. By then, Tina and the other kids came in, you know, my grandkids. And I started telling them what I seen. This is going to be a long vlog, so y'all might just uh, open your beer, get your coat, cup of coffee, smoke a cigarette, whatever the fuck you got to do, because it's going to be a few minutes. Oh, Grandpa, boy, we just... I started telling stories, man. The demons, man. There were demons in every corner of my fucking room. They were sitting in my bed. They were saying, come on, Grand Charlie. Come on, Charlie, you mine. You next. Come on. We waiting on you. We waiting on you. There was a demon on my bed. There was a demon on my on my on my nightstand. There was a demon everywhere. Them demons were waiting on me. It's strange. Before that surgery, I didn't give a fuck about nobody. You could have needed 50 cent and I'd have laughed at your ass because I wouldn't give you shit. I always thought there was an ulterior motive to everything anybody done for me. But them demons scared me. Them demons were after my ass. I mean, I knew I was going to hell. All of a sudden, man, things got, there was a light. I started falling. And you've heard the story of a lot of people, but I actually experienced it. I was falling and the light was so bright. My God, man, sunglasses wouldn't even stop that light as bright as it was. There was my mama, I talked to her, my dad, my grandmother, people from the past, a girl that I knew when I was young who committed suicide. She was there. You know, I hadn't even thought of her about them, you know, but She's with me now. She talks to me now. People say you're crazy, but nah, I ain't crazy. I was falling. The light was so bright. I got, I, I kept falling. All of a sudden, man, it got so goddamn bright. I had to like, Aah! and a voice came from nowhere and says, not now, Charlie. Maybe later, but not now. And I woke up, and I heard my daughter hollering and screaming at me. A lot of y'all say, Grandpa, you're too good for you. You're too good. You do too much for people. You care about people too much. You end up getting fucked. Fine, fuck me. I don't care. Because from that day on, Grandpa found he had a heart. Grandpa found if he had somebody that could needed something and he had it, he'd give it to him. Grandpa started believing in second chances, third chances. I now believe in people. I believe in you. I don't care about your past. You could have been a prostitute or be a prostitute now. I don't care. You're feeding your family. You're doing what you have to do to exist. I care about you. I care about my youngins, and y'all are all my youngins. Recently, I had a little heart problems, and it brought all this back to mind. That's why I'm doing this vlog now, because y'all need to know what Grandpa's been through. I'm going to be covering that this week, Grandpa's life. And I know y'all ain't gonna like this because I ain't being fucking crazy and I ain't being fucking mean and I ain't breaking nothing. This is my corner. This is Grandpa's corner. This is where I can talk to you. I love you. I love all y'all. Give people a chance. 
if, if you're, tr you know, I don't even have a Facebook right now because it's because of people fucking with me. People won't leave me alone. But you know, I guess that's what happens when you got a grandpa. Anyway, I'll be talking more about this. Bye. And there are my wings. Hi, food. Thank you, Michael. Hey, young as me, Grandpa. Got a little story I want to tell you. A little cute joke. Back when my kids were younger, a lady come knocking on the door and said she was from the Department of Social Services. And Charlie, he was like about 12, 13. And I said, yes, ma'am, can I help you? She said, yes, uh, I've got a complaint against Charles Green. And I said, I'm thinking, my boy, right? I said, what the hell has he done now? I said, uh, well, what's the problem? She said, well, we've had reports that, that, that Charles Green is walking around shaking his thing at his kids. And I'm going, what the fuck? That shit ain't happening. I said, he, he might do a lot of shit, but he don't do that. She said, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about you. Hang on a minute. And I was like, what the hell? Lady, you ain't talking about me. And she proceeded, you know, going through her service field, you know, well, this was reported by um, somebody, and we have, to, we have to, you know, investigate and... If this is found true, blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, you are a dumb fucking bitch. I would never do nothing like that. So I asked the girls, I said, don't tell them why I'm shaking my thing at you. No, Dad, we never told them, buddy, you don't do that. Said you lie, God, them goddamn lying motherfuckers out there talking shit about Grandpa. But I said, Charlie, because I wasn't called Grandpa then. And I'm, I'm sitting there arguing with ladies. She goes, Mr. Green, I, I don't know how we can prove that you're not doing it. I said, do what? She said, well, it was an accusation and we can't prove that you're not doing this. And you can't, well, you, and you can't prove that you're not doing this. So we had to take it that as true. Boy, it pissed me off so bad I told my kids. I said, get outside and play! Go out right now and play! And they like, what? I said, turn that damn TV off and go outside. So they turned the TV off and they went outside. Me and this lady, we argue now. Well, we get to the, we have words now. I said, let me show you something, lady. I'm going to prove it to your ass. I'm going to prove it to you right now. I dropped my pants. <laughs> I dropped my goddamn pants. And I said, lady, you, that's the proof. Lack of fucking evidence. Lack of evidence. I ain't got nothing to motherfucking swing. Boy, that lady turned about nine shades of red. Wrote down her book, Unfounded, and walked the fuck out of my house. Never heard from that bitch again. <laughs> Funny as hell, boy, that bitch. She was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. She didn't walk to her car. She run to her car. That ain't that goddamn problem. Case closed. Bye. Hey, gang. Shh. Guess where I'm at? I come to see Michael. Guess where he's at? He, I'll show you. What y'all think? Oh hell, he's asleep. <laughs> Michael is asleep. Damn. Look at all this shit they got hooked to him. Damn. This is shit. Let's take a let's take a better look at Michael. Okay, let's see. Shh, be quiet. We don't want to wake him up. Kind of looks like kid behind the camera. Michael. Hey. I come to see you. Oh shit, what time is it? I don't know. Oh, I feel like shit. How oh, we get the camera for it? Can't get the fuck out of here. 
<laughs> they got to catch me. Anyway, youngins, so you see yourself. You want to see yourself? Oh, That's man. what you look like. That's what I'm looking like at my casket tomorrow. You look like shit. Yeah, no shit. So what are they going to do to you? Fucking gallbladder or some shit. I don't even know at this point. Let's take a look at your gallbladder. Oh, uh, what the fuck? What if I'm naked under the thing? Oh. <laughs> look at this shit. I know, man. I had that when I was in the hospital. They couldn't find my fucking veins. I put it in my arm, dude. Yeah, I did a little thing to you this morning on YouTube, on my on my Facebook. What'd you do? Well, I put up some of your music. I said, we'll miss Michael. And... Oh, my dad already? Yeah, you did. <laughs> anyway, you youngest take a good look at Michael. You, I've never seen this. First time he's ever been in the hospital. It's my last time you'll see me. He thinks he's going to die. You don't die from gallbladder. Yeah, the gall seems like loose in my body and shit. What does that mean? Well, then you can play marbles in your belly. I'm like a fucking pinball machine. I know what I'm saying. A gumball machine. They got some kind of flavor. Much shit as you've eaten over the years, ain't no telling, boy. <laughs> you have eaten some garbage, man. I ain't lying. It's coming back to bite me. Let's take a look at old Michael's room here. Call, don't fail. Oh, call, don't fall. Oh, I can't even read. You're gonna hear some dumb shit. They feeding you? I'm not allowed to eat. Because I'm gonna be getting surgery. That's, you know, that, that's bad, man. They don't do surgery in the morning. That way you can eat when you get out. I know. This, whoever set this one up earlier, you can't see it now, but they put the fucking vein in the wrong. Or they, they fucked up the vein. This fluid shit was leaking in my arm. My arm was like double in size earlier. Damn! It was bullshit. Fucking hospital have I gone to? Okay, I'm gonna visit my son a while. You can't stay. You gotta fucking go. Bye. Grandpa here. And we in Michael's hospital room. Shh, shut the fuck up. Shh. You talk louder than that. It's my room. Talking damn way out water. I'm saying you can talk louder. <laughs> and I said I don't want to. I'm trying to, I'm in a hospital. You're not supposed to be loud at a hospital. Well, except when you were screaming at the nurses and shit. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I come up here just to see how the boy doing, right? And while I'm sitting here, the nurse come in. We're taking you. <laughs> we're taking you to surgery. He going now. So, he thinks he's going to die, so let's just get flowers. Everybody send their flowers to Michael Green. He'll be in care of Sturr's funeral home. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Anyway, there's our patient. There is Mikkel. Pickle boy, kid behind the camera. I'm naked under this blouse. <laughs> what if this thing's sheer see-through on camera? No. Get, on this thing. get out of here. <laughs> Anyway, they go do his surgery this morning. They go take his gallbladder out. And he's got to eat baby food. What? I ain't heard about no baby food. And there's man. Bridget. And what does Bridget say? Subscribe. Subscribe. I want a fucking ice cream waiting on me. When I get home or something. I'll be able to eat tonight, right? You'll be able to eat right after surgery when you come I haven't back. eaten in two days. I'm starving to death. Yeah, you ain't heard. Hey, I've lost, I bet you I've lost freaking four pounds in this hospital. Anyway, this is a nice hospital. We're not going to tell you the name of it because he don't need to be bothered. <laughs> I know, right? But anyway, Michael's going to surgery. Do you have any last words before you go, Michael? Before I die? Listen, i got to think of some famous yeah, last die. words. You're not going to die. All they're going to do is put two, three holes in you, snatch out your gallbladder, and that's it. Famous last words. Subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> Subscribe to Bridget West. Leave me the hell alone. Say bye, Michael. Tell him you'll see him after the surgery. Y'all, y'all like hearing stories about my my near death. Mom, give me that goddamn chair. I done told you once. I'm trying. Slow ass bitch. Anyway. I think you broke it when you threw it, dude. Well, you should have. You should have given me the damn eviction. You're right. I'll have to get you another chair now. Oh, damn. Now I got some broke ass chair. <laughs> <laughs>
Anyway, this is a little story I'm going to tell you about Michael. Me? Back when Michael was a little boy, Michael used to play with wrestlers. <laughs> I don't tell people about this story. He, he played with wrestling. He, he took a tape recorder. And he recorded, and here comes Macho Man Savage coming down the aisle, blah, 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 blah. But wasn't that old Michael was in his room? Because, see, we couldn't afford cable, so he has his own little wrestling matches and has his own little wrestling show. And he was a tiny thing. How old were you back then? Uh, probably about nine. About nine years old, you know? Boy, so Michael come running in the room. Daddy, daddy, daddy. I said, what's wrong, Michael? He said, you got to hear this, Dad. You got to hear this. I said, all right. So I, I put my beer down, you know, and I went down in his room. I said, what am I hearing? He took, his, he took his tape recorder and turned it on, right? And it says, and here comes Macho Man Savage. He's coming down the aisle with his manager. And all of a sudden there was a voice. Go to bed, Michael. Freaked him the fuck out. But guess what? Freaked me the fuck out, too. I ain't know what to think when I heard that shit. Let me say how it really happened. Leave me a goddamn camera. You're making this up. I am not making it up. You know what happened is I was I used to record little things and I was doing like a little talk show like Maury oh, Povich. Oh, so you're gonna be on Grandpa's corner now, huh? Hey, pickle boy on Grandpa's corner. So yeah, goddamn. I was. Let me tell. I'll give it back to you. So I was recording like a talk show and I was doing like and Kane is here to stay. I said some bullshit like that and. I'm re I like to I went, ah, ha, 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 replay it back, I rewind it, and right after I go, and Kane, you hear, go to sleep. Clear as day. Michael, go to sleep. It did say Michael, didn't it? Yeah. It was like, Michael, go to sleep. And at the time, Dad was outside getting drunk. He wasn't in no bedroom. He was hanging out in the tailgate of our drunk neighbor. And he was, blah, 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 blah. Hey, that's a lie. I never drank that much. Yeah, yeah, right. And so he was getting wasted. And I and I, I never been wasted. I left the thing playing, you know, because I just dropped it and took the fuck out of the room. And Dad goes, "Can you stop your shit? What's wrong with you? You think it's not like he was model father? What's wrong, buddy? You you started screaming. That at is me. not. That is you a were lie. yelling that at me. Dad goes, I never, I never scream. I screamed at Jenny then, but I never screamed. So at I, I go, Dad! He goes, hey, yeah. buddy. Hollering. And so I play the tape. Boom. You were my buddy when you Michael, were a kid. I never I'll hollered sleep. at you. I gave you everything you ever wanted. Hey, here, tell, you, tell your blog. I'm through the blog. Anyway, y'all know the story now how Michael heard uh, 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 somebody did his voice. And get that goddamn, you stupid little fart. Anyway, the Mark Man quit. Now, tomorrow I'm going to tell y'all another story about Jenny when she was a kid. Oh, you going to tell that one? I'm going to tell that one. That's, That's scary as fuck. In fact, I'm getting ready to tell it now. We're going to play it tomorrow. Bye, young guys. Tell it about this one. Bye. Yeah, I brought out Jennifer for this one. This is a story about Jennifer. Oh, no. Jennifer, how old were you back when we lived on uh, in Columbia? We lived over there in that trailer. The one where you had the... Right when you went, when you had to go live with them people. Triple Acres? Yeah, yes. it does. I forgot the name of the damn place. I'm getting old, you know. I was 10. Anyway, Jenny was 10. And one night I was in my room, I was sleeping, you know, and and, and Jenny come to my room, she said, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. I said, What, Jenny? She said, Daddy, would you tell him to shut up? I said, Jenny, who you talking about? She said, Daddy, they won't shut up. They won't leave me alone. I said, Jenny, first of all, you got to tell me, who, who are you talking about? She said, Red Man. I said, Red Man? I, I woke up Tina. I said, is there anybody named Red Man in this house? She said, not that my knowledge, there ain't no Red Man in this house. So I said, well, where's he at, Jenny? She said, he's in my room. So we go in her room, you know, and, and, and I said, well, what's Red Man telling you, Jenny? I said, Red Man, you better get leave my daughter alone, boy. You need to get the hell out of this goddamn room. I said, Jenny. What's Red Man telling you to do? She said, he's telling me to kill you. I said, whoa, that the fuck up. Whoa, you gonna kill me, Jenny? She said, he's telling me to, Daddy. And I said, Jenny, how you gonna kill me? She said, I got a knife. Knife? Where that knife at, Jenny? That bitch lifted her goddamn mattress. She had every knife in the motherfucking house under there. I said, Jesus Christ, she ain't just gonna kill me. She gonna die and set me and bury me all over the yard. Yeah, we didn't see Jenny for a while after that. Hey, the two next day, Jenny had to leave. <laughs> I didn't sleep that night. I sat on the edge of my bed. <laughs> I smoked cigarettes. Film that menacing grin. Look at this. Yeah, y'all was eating up. Watch this shit. <laughs> 
It's like that the happiest got, moment of her life. Uh, Jenny got damn crazy. So anyway, I got rid of Jenny, right? <laughs> I sent Jenny, I put Jenny in some in, in the institution. Just live with Miss Nancy after I Yeah, then she had to go live with this uh, mentor called Miss Nancy. For, I lived with her for over two, almost two years. Yeah, she did, bitch. You didn't, you didn't want to come back to our house? At that, <laughs> no. Oh, that, that lady, Miss Nancy, they had all kinds of money and shit, you know? They wanted to adopt me. And they wanted to know. adopt her. God, I wish I'd have done it. Me too. But Jenny wanted me to. Jenny wanted me to, to, to get to, to, to tell Red Man to not. not to, uh, goddamn Red Man, don't be telling Jenny to goddamn kill me. Ah! Ah! God damn her shoulder! Oh fuck! You stupid bitch! Damn! <laughs> I'm serious, man. Take the goddamn camera. You all right? God damn. Nice going, Jenny. Red Man strikes Red again. Red Man told me to. Damn. Red Man got me now, huh? Anyway, that's the story about Red Man and Jenny. And it's actually the truth. That is definitely the goddamn truth. <laughs> it really is the truth. That's the problem here. You know, back when Mike and I were little, I used to work for this fella named Lane, man. Old fucking slumlords, you know, they used to rent goddamn property and shit, you know. And I asked for Halloween off. Well, this motherfucker, he, he let me have it, but he always gave me a bunch of grief, you know. Anyway, I went, man, I went and bought a hog. And I rented a cooker. And me, me and the neighbor next door, Larry, we were, going, we were going to cook this hog and have a big party and get drunk. Well, I couldn't get drunk because I had to go to work the next day, but I had to party anyway. And Larry was dressed up like, uh, what was his name? Freddy. No, no, that was the other guy. The other guy was Freddy. Uh... One guy was dressed like Freddy Krueger, another guy named Michael Meyer. Had the Michael Meyer mask and shit, you know. And people would come by the house, them little kids go, Twig, twig! Twink or tweet! Hey, fuck you, shut up! Anyway, I had that old hog head, you know, and I'd hold that old hog head. Ah, they'd run like a motherfucker, you know? They'd scatter like roaches when you turn on the light in the kitchen at night, you know what I mean? We had a problem, didn't we? Turn the light, goddamn roaches go everywhere. Anyway, Larry, Larry and old Freddy. People driving their kids around, seeing they get out in the car with them, seeing they come up to your door. Take a treat, take a treat. Well, Larry and, my, and old, 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 old Larry and, and, and old, old Freddie, they, they went and got in the back seat of the car. <laughs> that bitch got in that car. She looked in her rearview mirror. She commenced to screaming. She pissed her fucking pants. She got out of the car and she ran down the street. Her husband had to come back and get the car. That bitch was scared to fucking death. And Larry, they get out and follow her. They got the fucking knives on. They follow her down the street. She run like a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I remember that same guy. Did back when you were drunk, wasn't it? Yeah, when I was drunk. Yeah, our, that guy who dressed up like Freddy. Yeah, you, you're like, hey Mike, you wanna see something? And you pick me up to that guy's window, and it's all dark, and I'm trying to look, and all of a sudden he's got, he goes, ah, with a Freddy glove to the fucking window. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, we gotta get good. And I'm screaming. Halloween has always been good. Back when I was a kid, I used to go, I used to go, you know, trick or treating. And back then, man, you could leave your house at six o'clock, and you could run the neighborhood, man, nobody bothered you. You can't do that these days. But anyway, I was what you call a snatch and grab kind of trick-or-treater. I let these kids go trick-or-treat and get the candy and I'd run down the street, snatch their bag and run like a motherfucker. And I had me a whole, I mean, I'd do that like nine or ten times. I'd have me a bag of candy and they'd been to the first fucking door. But that's the way I trick-or-treated. Now, tomorrow I'm gonna tell y'all one about the time I actually took a bag of shit and lit it at a door. That's tomorrow. I've heard that one. It's very funny. Story. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Trick or fucking treat, bitch! Give me your goddamn candy fucking now! Bye. You know, back when I was a kid, we went to my grandmama's for uh, Halloween one year. I'll start over, because I was talking when you started. I don't care. All right. It's my vlog. Fuck you. Okay. Anyway, I'll go to my grandmama's for Halloween one year. I just think I was like 12, 13. And me and my cousin... Went to a cow pasture. And we found us some cow shit. I mean, that was some gooey motherfucking shit. Oh, God damn. Well, my grandmother lived in a little town called Oler. Now, that will tell you something right there. It's one of them little towns that when you go through it at nighttime, you're going to hit all the dirt because they roll the streets up at 7 o'clock and put them behind the city hall. 
and then the next morning six o'clock they rolled them back out okay and we had a big old bag we had like two or three big old bags for the cow shit and we would go to somebody's door and we'd knock and I was knocking and my cousin was lighting the bag motherfucker open that door see that goddamn fire go to stomping goddamn cow shit flying all over the fucking porch his door hey I god damn motherfucking kids I'll tear me some kids asses up if I catch them around my house again yeah we did it twice <laughs> I mean I, it was fun so if any of y'all going out and knock on the door make sure you take a bag of cow shit Dog shit. Don't take any human shit because then I'm going to think there's something wrong with your ass if you do that. But do that. Not put it and then light that motherfucker. It'll be blazing. Man will come out or a woman will come out and they get so damn upset they start stomping because they don't want to burn their house down. And you got the ass, man. They got cow shit all around their fucking ankles and that's stinking like a motherfucker too. Shit. <laughs> what a little Halloween pleasure you can have. Tell you a joke. Little girl go little girl goes to the door, knocks on the door, hollers, Twinkle Tweet. Old lady asks the door and she said, honey, that was cute. Say it again. Little girl say, Twinkle Tweet. Oh shit, that's so precious. <laughs> Larry come in. Oh Larry come to the door. Her husband, you know. Couldn't be a boyfriend, bitch too fucking old. She said, do it again, honey. Tell, show, show Mr. Larry what you say. So the little girl looked at him. She said, sweet as she can be with that little baby face. She said, twig or twig. He said, oh, honey, don't give this child that shit we're giving everybody else. Give, go get that child something good. Old lady went to the kitchen, come back with a big apple, you know, big old red, juicy looking motherfucker, you know. And she said, open your bag, darling. Little girl opened her bag, and the old lady dropped the apple in her bag. Little girl looked up at the old lady and said, Big deal the apple, you broke my fucking cookies! Have fun. Took a tweet. <laughs> my new shirt! <laughs> Where's ours? My, uh, Where's ours? Give me the money. I designed hey, it. Hey, look at the back, I man. should get it. Look at the back! <laughs> Here's my question. What? You've had this shirt for today, and it's filthy. It looks like you've been rolling around in mud. Man, get your hands off. Come here. Come here, Bridget. You know why this shirt says, God damn, pinwheel eating, bitch? Because you were always stealing my candy. I got tired of it. Pinwheels aren't candy. This shirt is dedicated to you. You got damn pinwheel eating. Bitch! Well, that's the New England Grandpa shirt. I love it! Look at my shirt, man! I really want one! Look at we'll my shirt! Oh, you're my... hurting my hand! Oh, look at my goddamn shirt! Right here! See? Yeah. Hey, you're supposed to be angry, I think, at me. There, you're gonna break the camera. I'll hold it. What? Youngins! Also, if you order a shirt right now, what do you say, right now? Yeah, right now. If you order a shirt right now, you'll be entered to win Grandpa's old computer. Whoa! Whoa, wait a minute. No. Hell no. Yes, you'll be entered no, to win No, ain't happening. That's my computer. If you win it, take a video so I can show Grandpa uh, that you've and got I'll his I'll come look you up, dude. That's my computer. Okay. Okay. Oh, maybe you should have done that anyway. You got clean. Dad, it's just a prize. Just a Whoa. That's my computer. Watch it, big Mine. boy. You're not giving away my computer. It is mine. I bought it and paid for it. You're going to have to get over it. Oh, challenge. Let me tell you one thing, princess. Why don't you call her a goddamn pinball eating bitch? <laughs> yeah, you goddamn pinball eating bitch. See the shirt? It's for you. Order the shirt. Win Grandpa's no! computer. No, no, goddamn no. Goddamn. Ah. Okay, that uh, that was cl that clearly already happened. That is old. You just caused it. So order the shirt. No, win Grandpa's no, computer. No, 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 nobody order no shirt. Order I don't want you to have it. Stay, don't you order my shirt. Order the shirt. Order the shirt. Do not order the goddamn shirt. Win his computer. Do not order now, the goddamn shirt. Now here's the question. 
If it's Grandpa's old computer, you might be able to log in through his Facebook and it. If you get it, delete his Facebook account. <laughs> do, not, do not buy a shirt. I don't want to do it with my computer. Delete the Facebook. And his Twitter. Delete his Twitter, too. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm mad. If you want to cook for Grandpa, all you need is a goddamn hammer and a pound of bacon! <laughs> you know Grandpa cooks some weird shit. But it turns out alright, tastes good. So let me show you this shit. What you do is you take chicken tenders, bell pepper, onion, and salt and pepper, a little bit of margarine, right? And a little bit of water. And you put them in a crock pot. And what you wanna do is you wanna get that turning. And then when that's done, you're gonna make some stove top stuffing. Oh, I forgot. With the chicken, you put in bacon. All crumbled up, a little bacon grease, you know? You know, Grandpa don't cook nothing unless he goddamn throw bacon in that shit. So anyway, we gon' we gon' we gon' we got that going. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get the stove top going. I'm getting that now. Nothing on sugar. Look at that boy. Got more chicken tenders, bell pepper, onion, bacon, bacon grease, and the next step. Rice. Cause with goddamn rice, you can't go wrong. Man, rice is good with anything. So I'm making them a little meal today. I'm gonna make them some, this new stuff I'm making. So they gonna have some chicken and rice. And they gonna have this chicken stuff. Oh, and once you get the stove top in, what's the next step? Swiss cheese. You put the Swiss cheese on top and just kind of let it all blend in together. Gotta be good, can't be bad, why? Cause it's got fucking bacon! <laughs> so I'll be back shortly and we'll look at the final result. Okay, I added the dressing. Now I got dressing on there. Now we're gonna put on the Swiss cheese. Shit looking good, ain't it? That cheese feels mighty thick. Anyway, we're gonna put that on. Now I'm gonna make some more dressing, put it on top, and then just let it cook in the crock pot for a few hours. Oh my fucking God. That's gotta be good. Got to be good. Might even throw a, ham, a piece or two of ham on there. Anyway, youngins, I'll be back when this is all done, and I'll show you the result. See all that's cooked up now? Jesus Christ! AGB is a cook! Anyway, that's, let me give you the directions. That's, that's chicken tenders, bacon, bacon grease, bell pepper, onion. Put in there, put in your crock pot for a while, let it get done. Then put you some stove top stuffing on there. And then your Swiss cheese! Swiss cheese! Get over here. Got chicken and rice. Made with bacon. You know it's gonna have bacon in it, bitch. Uh, bell pepper, onion, and of course chicken. You think I'm a dumbass? That's your chicken and rice. Then I took some squash and some bacon and bacon grease and bell pepper and some onion and just kind of saute it and bring it on down to, it, to where it's tender. And that's your final plate. Now you know AGP can cook! I've been cooking for three years for y'all! Y'all got to try this though. This shit is awesome. Alright youngins, that's another cooking with grandpa. If you don't like it, bug it, don't eat it. Yo, 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 AGP in the house. You know, old grandpa going this afternoon. And, and, and he, he got to buy him a flashlight. 
And I'm going, you son of a bitch, you better not get in my mother. Man, I hate people getting your damn way, you know what I mean? It sucks. But AGP is going to do a little ghost hunt tonight. And that reminds me of a story when I was younger. And my daddy, you should tell me about that. You know, it's time to talk about the hag, you know. It's Halloween. Ooh. Ooh. And the hag is out in full force, man. My daddy said the hag jumped his ass one time. The hag, man, she's she's an ugly bitch, man. She got, uh, you know, she wants to uh, suck your tongue and take your breath away and kill your ass. I've had to hang on me numerous times. Sometimes, you can tell I, I think it was just bad drugs, you know what I mean? But literally, I have had to hang on me, man. I'm, you know, you get there and you can't move. The fat bitch on top of you, you, you just can't do nothing! You go, my God! When did old Bertha get on top of me? It ain't Bertha, it's the fucking hag. I'd hate to be Mr. Hag, because if he's as ugly as fat as she is, that one ugly motherfucker. But anyway, when you're out and about, man, and you're trying to sleep, and you feel something weighing you down, and nothing you can do about it, it ain't nothing wrong with your body. It's a goddamn hag on your motherfucking ass. You better start cussing. You better start saying, you fat, ugly bitch. Get the fuck off me. Get the fuck off me. Ah, ah, you whore. Get off me. And she'll get up and go. But you got to cuss the hag, man. That's the way you get the hag off your ass. I've had a lot of youngers ride me. Grandpa, I've had the hag, man. I thought I'm going to die. How do I get the hag off of me, Grandpa? I just fucking told you! Clean your fucking ears out! Get the wax out, the motherfuckers! Jesus fucking Christ! Cuss her fat, ugly ass! And she'll go away. Now, if, 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 if her good sister Glinda the, Glinda the, uh, the, the, the hat cut, you let, hey, let her lay on you, boy. You like her. I've seen Glinda, too. Woo -hoo -hoo. The things I would like to do to Glinda. That's the hags. They ain't twin sisters. Cause the fucking hag is ugly. Fat. Got zits with the fuck out the head shit, you know? Goddamn teeth are all, uh, uh, uh. Looks like some kind of got a growling dog with goddamn tooth decay. Watch out for the hag! It's the time! It's the time! Beware! To arms! To arms! Fight the hag! Cuss her ugly ass! And I'll talk to you tomorrow. AGP hey, here. How you doing? How you doing? Good morning. Something been on my mind. I got a couple that got married about two or three weeks ago in Charleston, West Virginia. And they're a happy young couple, you know. You know how young lovers are. They're just you know, moving along, you know. Well, they came to see me. They came here on their honeymoon. And they come see Grandpa. Ah, I love it. Come see your Grandpa. Your Grandpa loves you. Ah. <laughs> anyway. They telling me about their wedding, right? And how nice it was, and the little boat ride, and the little flower girl, you know, the little thing, you know. Then they told me about the reception at the Ramada Inn in Charleston, West Virginia. Now I got a method to my madness, you know I always do. Anyway, it cost him over $3,000 for that reception. I don't know about you, but it'd take me a long time, if ever, to, to raise that much money for a reception. But they were in love, and they got married, and God bless them. They're, nice, they're a nice young couple. You know, I consider them my children, you know, because we got along so well. Damn, I don't know what the fuck that was. Anyway. So a lot of shit wasn't right with the reception. The Ramada Inn in Charleston, West Virginia. The rooms really weren't that clean. Now they got a whole long list of shit that was wrong. I'm just going to give you a few. 
The rooms were a little dirty, you know. The bride's phone didn't work, so she had to use her cell phone. She called down to the front office about it, but they never did nothing about the phone. The fuck, you paid that much for a room? At the Ramata Inn in Charleston, West Virginia. Damn, I don't know what the fuck I eat. It tastes nasty. Uh, I ain't even mentioned their name, but I want to congratulate Alan Newman and his new bride, Shonda Bell Newman. Congratulations on being married. <laughs> I give it about five years and you be fight like me and my ex old lady. <laughs> I hope not. And I hope you ain't got no vagina spiders, okay? Alan, if she's got vagina spiders, call Terminex right now. Anyway, at the reception, they were supposed to have cheese and fruit on the bar. I know this is minor shit, but come on. When it's your special day, you want everything perfect. That's what you pay for. That's why they got a wedding planner. He's supposed to make the wedding planner, man or woman, whichever, is supposed to make sure everything's right. That everything you paid for is there. The cheese, the fruit wasn't there. The wait staff was supposed to was supposed to cut the cake and serve it to the guest. How the fuck they gonna do that when they dancing on the floor? They won't even take time out to do the fucking job. Anyway, there was a long list of stuff that wasn't right with the reception. So Grandpa I tell him, I said, you know, call Ramada in in Charleston, West Virginia. And tell you know, and just tell them you know, Sean to say, hey, things weren't right. You know, I realize I can't get all my money back, but hell, give me, give me a bone, give me something, throw me a bone. Case closed. You had your reception. Case closed. Fuck you. Case opened. AGP just opened a son of a bitch. Now you you know I know you you know Ramada Inn in Charleston, West Virginia. Is a bunch of cheap Charlie sons of bitches. You know, I understand that. It's all about the dollar. It's all about the dollar. Well, if you ain't gonna give them no fucking money, which you should re you know, hell, over three thousand dollars, you ought to give them five hundred of it back. But no, we know you're not gonna do that. We know you're not gonna do that because you're assholes. You heard it. Grandpa just called you an asshole, Ramada Inn, in Charleston, West Virginia. And I done called them people. I done called and told them I thought they were wrong and they were doing the wrong thing. And then you do something. If you don't want to give them their money back, some of their money back, because I know you, you don't, they don't deserve all their money back. I realize they deserve something, though. Why don't you give them a, a free weekend at any Ramada in the United States that they want? The, the good room, not one of them little cheap Charlie motherfuckers that everybody else has to take. I mean a good room. The honeymoon suite, something like that. Give it to them for a weekend. Do something. It's just not fair. It's just not fair to, to, to make them, 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 them children suffer because you didn't do your fucking job. Ramada Inn, Charleston, West Virginia. I keep saying your name a lot because I want all my youngest to hear it. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of my youngins don't give you a call and say, hey, make it right. Shonda Bell, look it up. You'll find her. Look and see where you took her fucking over $3,000. Now, what you need to remind is fire that son of a bitch that you call a wedding planner. Fire that fucker. Hire somebody that's willing to tell the waitstaff, hey, you ain't supposed to be dancing with the guests. Your ass supposed to be working. Do your job. I'll give you two weeks. If I don't hear from Shonda saying that y'all made something right, I'm gonna do another video. And this ain't gonna be nice. And this is going to your fucking home office. I promise you, I will make it and I will send it straight to them. And don't think I don't have enough people that I can't get you a fucking bunch of calls if I want it. Cause all I gotta do is say, young is, you need to call these fuckers, and they'll do it. And ask some of these companies that, that I've shut down for two or three days at the time because they didn't want to do what was right and treat their people like they're supposed to be treated with integrity, with dignity. No, you just want their money, that's all you want, and screw them. 
So Ramada Inn in Charleston, West Virginia. Make it right. You will hear from me again in about two weeks. And this time it will not. I won't be smiling. <laughs> I'll be after your blood. Good luck, Alan, Shonda. Let me know if anything develops on this, okay? Bye, youngins. Grandpa gone. Uh, uh, hey, youngins. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Old Grandpa. You ever just have something just pop in your head? Y'all gotta bear with me, man. I just woke up. You know, life's funny. I'm not trying to be funny now. I'm just saying life's funny. I just woke up thinking about my sister. You know, my sister's in the hospital. They've got her own, but they got on some equipment, you know, this cleaning out her, filtering stuff, and I don't know, I ain't, I ain't no daughter. But I woke up thinking, that's the only sister I got in this world. My sister and I, we've never really seen eye to eye on a lot of stuff. And we've had some views and some arguments. I didn't even put my teeth in. Anyway, we've, we've had some views of arguments. She and I fought over a lot of stuff. But I love my sister. Let's get that straight right now. I will fight you over my sister. My sister's the only person I got left in this world. I realize I've got youngins, I've got children. But it's not the same as it is with your sibling. The one you grew up with. The one that when you were little used to share rooms together with, you know, because you lived in a little old two bedroom house in St. Andrew's homes and had to share a room. My sister's in the hospital and from what I understand she ain't gonna make it. Six months, a year, month, who knows? You never know when God's gonna call you home. And I know y'all see the side of me, the rough and tough guy, you know. <clears throat> but I'm also family oriented. <clears throat> Damn, it's hard waking up 3 o'clock in the morning and doing this. Well, what am I even doing this for? But my sister and I had a lot of hard times. We went through poverty when we were little. I remember her first marriage. It wasn't a good marriage. Hell, neither was mine. We had problems. But we were there for each other. When things were really bad. I remember one time, she and I, lived, we lived in St. Andrew's Homes. I was like six years old, and she was like, what, nine, ten, something like that. And we were going to the circus. And we ain't had no money to go. Mama gave us each a dollar a piece to go to the circus. We were going with a friend of my mama's. Charlene went in there and she done took $10 out of mama's wallet. We went to the circus. <laughs> mama got the next morning looking for her $10 and it was gone. And I remember her sort of cutting my ass because she knew I did it, you know, because I, I did everything, you know. Charlene stood up, no, mama, I, I took the $10. Too late then, Mama done kicked my ass. But I remember Mama, Mama, 
Just couldn't believe Charlene do something like that. I remember my sister was all big in the church. You know, she was in the choir and she taught Sunday school. And church doors opened, Charlene was there. Me? Uh-uh, baby. My ass is home playing because I ain't going to church. I ain't never going to church much. But yeah, the church choir goes on a, on a trip during the summer. My sister ride along with them, you know. Good old Miss Masters, a real nice, sweet old ladies, pay my sister's way to go on those trips. Cause we didn't have nothing. My daddy, he's he got hurt when I was like 10 years old. He was paralyzed from the neck down for 34, 35 years before he died. My sister had to quit school. And because and, mama had to work, because you know, mama had to pay the bills, mama had to feed us. And my sister quit school and took care of my daddy. And I mean, when I said take care of my daddy, you're talking about a 15, 16 year old girl having to wash her daddy's ass, give him a bath, seven days a week. My sister did everything for my daddy. Mama worked, she come home and then she'd take over daddy and Charlene could go out if she wanted to or whatever, she, but she didn't. She stayed right there. I remember one time she, she was in the church, she was in what they call the WMU. And that's still some kind of women's shit, I ain't know, you know. But she was the treasure. <laughs> I stole the money. <laughs> Oh, I stole the money and Mama had to pay it back. Mama cut my ass, took me to the barber shop, shaved my head too. I never done that shit again. Learned my lesson on that. I've been I've been thinking all dreaming about my sister, thinking about her, you know. I'm gonna miss my sister when she goes. And who knows, I'll probably hell, she might even outlive me. It's strange how things work. Man, I don't even, I look bad, man, God. My sister and I went through hard times. And you know something, I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to start telling y'all more about my life. And I, You know, y'all know me, but y'all don't know me. Y'all know where I am now, but you don't know where I was when I was coming up. I know I tell y'all about the Woodstock stuff and stuff like that, but I don't tell you about my whole life. You're going to find out over the next couple months, because between now and Christmas, I'm going to leave a whole story out. Good, bad, like it or not, I don't care. He thinks he's smart, but I got news for him. There's some good people in this world. And you don't have to look far to find them. There's people that want to help you. There's people that want to do things. Give them a chance. There were times that even in my adult life, if I needed somebody, I could talk to my sister. Things would worry me and bother me, and Mama was busy or something. I could talk to my sister. So yeah, I can also truly say that my sister goes because, like I say, she is in the hospital. But she's not doing good. I wish her the best, Charlene. I love you. I will miss you. And we'll talk more about that if anything happens. But right now, I hope you're getting better. I pray that you get strong again. And that nothing happens. I love you, Charlene. I never told you that. Sure, I mean, I've gone and I've loved you, sis, and shit like that. But you know something? I've never told you like this. I love you, sis. I love you. Goodbye. People, I will be back.
I guess I gotta go because I need to go back to bed. Like I say, it's th and that was what? It's almost 3 30 in the morning. I'm tired. I want to go back to bed. But I was thinking about my sister and I had to get it out. And I, I'm pretty sure Michael's going to throw some inserts in there because y'all seen my sister in videos and y'all liked her because y'all liked the way she handled me. <laughs> Bye, youngins. I'll see you on the next one. You got that on me? Yes, I'm holding it. Is it I on? I don't want to film this shit. Is it on? Yes. I know you don't want to film it. But this is family turmoil. I don't give a damn. It's got to come out. I got an inbox from my daughter. If you say anything negative about her, I'm turning the camera off. I'll be goddamn. I'll just get my camera then. I know, I, I know how to put it up. Anyway. I mean, don't say call her. Shut up! All right. Anyway, my daughter was jumping on my ass saying that I care more about y'all than I do my own children. That ain't true to start with. I do care a lot about y'all. Y'all know that because I do talk to y'all. But some of y'all have problems. You know, some of you ain't got a life. And you talk to me about it and I try to help you. Why didn't you talk to my goddamn daughter and them for all the damn time? What the one thing she brought up? You got it on me? Sure. Yes, it's on you. She got on my ass because I did not remember my granddaughter's birthday. I don't even remember my own goddamn birthday! I don't even know your birthday, Michael! You want me to know your birthday? Tell me your dear to it. Then you got your okay. with me. I said leave it on. All right. I said leave it on. God damn it, you I said leave it on. I don't even remember my own damn birthday. I don't know yours. I don't know it. But you tell me. Thank you for me writing and saying. I... Pissing me the fuck off. Let me tell you something, little girl. What did I do when you were running around with that little bitch whore fucking Gaston? And y'all were going here, there, and everywhere, staying gone all nights and hours, and staying gone days at the time. I ain't goddamn say nothing. I threatened to shoot the bitch, but... You don't remember all that shit. You don't remember all the trouble you put me through. Yeah, I like my youngins. But you need to find out who you need to realize, and, you, and, 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 then, and then you tell me, you hope that one day I decide that I have children and that, I, and that I, if I love them, which you don't think I ever will. You keep talking that goddamn way? No, I won't. You can stay on your own. That's another thing. You're talking about I don't see my granddaughter. I love my granddaughter. But I'm here with four boys. I'm not able to go to New York. But you got the one little girl. You could come to South Carolina and see your damn daddy. I am your damn daddy, no. You'll, 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 you'll let your mama come visit and you'll let Michael come and visit, but I ain't welcome, you don't invite me. You don't say, Dad, can you come up here and spend a few days with me? You ain't never done that. Sure, I don't treat y'all like, 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 like little, little, little darlings. Cause you ain't no little darlings. I got you, you ran around with that old bitch, you caused me a lot of problems. I got Jenny, enough said. I got Charlie, sober up boy. Don't know what I got is Michael. Michael's the only one who stood by me side by side. Just he was a little tiny tot. But no, that's not good enough. I, I do the best I could for y'all. I worked three fucking jobs. Three fucking jobs to make sure you had shoes. To make sure there was food on the table. To make sure you had clothes. And, and more, we want to talk, let's talk about father of the year. I won father of the fucking year. That was I don't another. film that. Yeah, you're on that goddamn camera. I won no more father of the year than the goddamn Satan's gonna run heaven. I mean, you tell me, you tell me that, that, that I was father of the year. You had me believe in that shit for two fucking weeks. I asked what assembly was, y'all told me. I put on my goddamn Sunday best. And I went to your goddamn school. Nobody even knew anything about it. <laughs> Boy, was I fucking embarrassed me so bad at school that I, I, I fucking cried, turned around, walked out. I was so fucking embarrassed. So don't you get all happy and huffy with me, Missy. But yeah, you are my daughter and a belated happy birthday. What's the baby's name?
I'm sorry, I don't remember. Lily. I can't remember the name. So Lily, here's a belated happy birthday from your grandpa that you'll never see. See, you can do it, I can do it. Yeah, go ahead, do it. Show the world. You got your camera and I got mine. Watch show around the room, show what you did. I ain't done a goddamn thing. I didn't do that, you did. Y'all see what happened when goes to my house? Why don't you unplug that charger from the wall? So what's... Michael destroys my house every time. Look at him. Hello, Charles. <laughs> Michael destroys my house every time. Michael is a bad son. Okay, that ain't right to say. Michael's a bad boy. Need to cut his ass. Get out of here! Look what you done. You did this. You did this. You did this. You did this, you princess looking bitch. Get out! Okay. I'm filming you. I'm, I, I'm doing this because I ain't going to go to jail. Before these come, I got a <laughs> record. You don't got to worry about that because I'm filming it. But I'm going to make sure you don't do nothing to me. I'm like I would have done that. What are you doing? I'm going towards the chicken here. Get out of my goddamn house. You're he is uninvited. Y'all hear me? He got to get out of my motherfucking house. Get out. Motherfucker. Eat my goddamn... I ain't got teeth. So the point you're making, just to make your point, is that the election's over and just shut up about it. Right! Okay, that's all you had to say? I did say it. You could have done a blog on Grandpa's Corner saying that. Get out of my house! <laughs> Whatever. Let's go. I feel like looking. Doing some shit in the place. How about that? You motherfucker. How about that shit? I'm gonna have you arrested. I got proof that you destroyed my house. This is bullshit. I'm getting I'm off. telling the police. I just kicked the couch. Um. Hey! Get... I'm watching you leave. What happened? You bitch, out of my goddamn rug. What happened to your yard? The boys. Get out. Good fucking bye. Don't come back. Come Got rid of that motherfucker, didn't we? I didn't destroy my house. I meant what I said, man. I'm tired of goddamn people talking about Romney this and the world's gonna be that. You only got four years to worry about it. In four years, you can vote again. And you can pick who you want to win. Romney sucks. Obama sucks. Next four, next four years, I'm gonna start. A, I'm gonna start a campaign, youngins. AGP for president, 2015, 16, or whatever the motherfucker. Ah! Goddamn! Ew! What is in this? Ew! As you see, I got on my shirt. <laughs> it's been two weeks. Two weeks ago, I did a vlog about the Ramada Inn in Charleston, West Virginia. Son of a bitches don't listen. I give them two weeks to respond. The Ramada Inn in Charleston, West Virginia. Either they're stupid or they're so too much of a fucking hillbilly that they just don't understand English. So I'm going to, I'm going to real slowly do this today. Ramada Inn in Charleston, West Virginia. You fucked up a wedding. You fucked up a reception. You didn't have what was supposed to be on there. You didn't have it. But you were sure quick to take their $3,000 and run to the fucking bank. I told you this one was gonna be harder. I fucking meant it. Y'all are a bunch of sorry fucking excuses for a hotel. You need to take your damn people that you got running, your, you need to take the people that you got running your, your so-called receptions and fire them motherfuckers. They don't deserve their jobs. Uh, 
Evidently your people know how to dance because I saw videos of your employees getting paid on the job dancing at a wedding reception. God, y'all are good dancers. Y'all must have went to fucking Arthur Murray. Let me tell you people something. You better get your shit in order. You better get your shit right. Cause, and youngest, I, I, I didn't say a word last time. Now it's time to call Ramada in corporate headquarters. Because evidently the people in Charleston, West Virginia are stupid. They don't have the sense God gave a goddamn, well, besides that. It's time to call them and say, look here, your Ramada Inn in Charleston, West Virginia sucks. They screw people out of money. They don't want to do what they're supposed to do. They have nasty rooms. And it's time to call, youngins. So Grandpa's Army, have fun. Tell them what you want. I don't care now. So Ramada Inn in Charleston, West Virginia, I'll be talking to you again in two weeks if I don't hear something. And uh, until then, bye. It's recording. You know, I'm going to tell you, oh, God damn, I'm going to see myself. There he is. Hi, youngins. You know, one Thanksgiving, somebody told me to cook my turkey to put the motherfucker on on uh, the highest it can go, 500 something degrees, and leave it for two hours, and then turn the oven off. So I said, fuck, I, I, I wouldn't try it anyway, so I did that. Well, I forgot I went and fell asleep. I woke up, the smoke was in my house. God damn, smoke was everywhere. I opened up the oven door. The motherfucker went poof. The goddamn meat was hard as a fucking rock. It was blacker than, well, it was black. That was the, and it was Thanksgiving morning. Nothing, back in them days, all stores closed on Thanksgiving. The motherfucker turned to powder. Swear to God, I just took the damn leg and went, and Wait a minute. I think I remember this thing. Yeah, you remember. Is that when we had banquet dinners for Thanksgiving? And finally, I had some two turkey banquet dinners in the freezer. Oh, shit. And I did that out. And that's what we had for, had, had for goddamn Thanksgiving dinner was banquet turkey dinners. Then there was the Thanksgiving where I made the dressing. I got a little heavy with the salt. That, and I had people coming over to eat, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't have shit to make no more dressing. So what did I do? I took the strainer and I put all the dressing in the strainer and I just kept pouring water and taking my hands, you know, and stirring that shit up oh, and get the guy to you Don't forget that? the best part. That was that strainer idea was mom's idea. And dad goes, you stupid bitch. What the fuck? Why you, you gotta bring her name up in this shit? Mom told him. Why you gotta bring her name up in this because shit? Because she's relevant. She is not relevant at all in my life. Dad told her, or she told Dad to put the put the dressing in anyway, the strainer, and he said she was stupid, I, and then she did. I strained all that shit. Finally, I got all the salt off, but I also took out all the flavor out of the dressing. <laughs> what the? Fuck? There was no flavor in that fucking dressing. So what I had to do? I had some chicken in the fucking freezer. I balled the fuck out of it, man. A little water, just enough to ball it. I got all that fucking chicken juice, and I poured the chicken juice on top of that dressing. And then baked it. Still sucked. But the, I don't think anybody wanted to tell you, but it did, it did kind of suck. Then there was the goddamn Thanksgiving. I made the dress, and I got a little rambunctious. I had a, I had a plastic spoon. And we had people over, man, for dinner. We all sat down, you know, and done said grace. And everybody done said what they were thankful for. I wasn't thankful when I took that goddamn spoon and dug in that goddamn dress. And that goddamn spoon broke. Went right through my motherfucking hand. So here I am trying to fix plates. Bleed like a motherfucking stuck pig. You remember that, Michael? Yeah, none of us ate the dressing because there was blood in it. Blood all in the dressing, but I eat the dress. I eat the dressing. Tomorrow, I got another story you can tell. Tomorrow, or uh, whenever it's got it's got to be told. The but, time where you set the porch on fire. That wasn't me. That was Captain Burnapot. You were part of that situation. The pot. Well, goddamn, Kimberly was trying to crawl under the goddamn under the goddamn steps and shit. Well, anyway, youngins. Happy Thanksgiving. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Where the fuck is that switch? We'll yep. do it right now. We could just do it. I, I want to hear this story again. We used to live in... Do I got to tell the story? Yes, it's really funny. I'm pretty sure I've told it before, but it's got to be told again. We used to live in Gaston, right? In Gaston, South Carolina. 
And I had a friend named Steve, and he was staying with me a little bit. He was an alcoholic. He was an alcoholic. But anyway, we were gonna we were gonna make a we were gonna, we were he was gonna fry turkey. So we went and got the pots and everything, you know, and put it out on the deck like this. And we like put it right here, you know, and he turned the goddamn fire on that goddamn oil. Number one, we we use vegetable oil. So we got that fire rolling, you know, and I'm saying, you reckon it's ready yet, Steve? Nah, it ain't boiling. Steve, been, you've had it burning here for like 30 minutes, man. Something's wrong, it's starting to smoke. <laughs> it ain't boiling, man, it ain't ready yet. I said, well, let's, let's try it. Oh, God damn. So he rammed that son bitches up the goddamn turkey's ass, you know, and put that son of a bitch boy and stuck it in the pot. All of a sudden, that motherfucker went <laughs> balling over every motherfucker all over my porch. Goddamn fire every motherfucking where. Some damn neighbor done called the fire department, man, and we hear sirens. Goddamn Kimberly, she crawls under the, she wants to see the fire drip down off the goddamn porch. No, that's not what she did. She was trying to put fucking fires out, dude. Anyway, it was pie on the porch. She was trying to put it up, but goddamn, it's about ready to drip in her fucking head, stupid bitch. <laughs> goddamn old Captain Burnham Pot, man, he said, let's put a goddamn lid on it. You couldn't get close to that motherfucker to put no goddamn lid. That motherfucker. I mean, that fire was rolling. You thought it was a goddamn house fire the way it was going. Goddamn, all these volunteers pull up here. Oh my God, oh my God. I said, oh my God, fuck, put my goddamn porch out. Goddamn, here come the fire. Next thing you know, man, they they, they, found it, they threw the lid on there, man, and it's got to stop, right? So they take the pot and they take it out to the yard and a bunch of pine straw. They take the goddamn lid off. That motherfucker <laughs> done lit up again, goddamn pine straw, the whole front yard burning down, the goddamn porch burning down. Goddamn Captain Melt the Pot said, I gotta go get me a bear. Went in the house and got him a Budweiser and come back out and finish watching the festivities. <laughs> All on Thanksgiving. I ain't never going to fry another turkey. I ain't never going to fry a fucking turkey. Never going to happen. I got a question. Didn't what? He, didn't he like drink and drive and crash the van the next day? Yeah. Oh, that was another thing. The next day he got my vans and he taking his girl home, right? Motherfucker drunk anyway and he took my van and crashed and the police took him to jail. So... I not only had to clean the porch shit and clean the yard, had to go get his ass out of jail the day after that. So, <laughs> oh God. Anyway, youngins, happy Thanksgiving. You know, youngins, back when my older son Charlie, he was four, five. Jennifer was like two. We lived in a place in Hanahan. It was, it was, it was run. It, it was owned by this congressman now. You know. But it was it was a dump. He was a slumlord. You wait, know? wait. What was his name? I forget his name. Brown. Brown. Yeah. He he nice guy, but he just he was a slumlord. He wouldn't fix nothing. And when he did, he anyway. That's beside the point. Anyway, one, we moved there, and I just I, I was out sick from the fire department, and I was out for like two months, and didn't have no money. And Christmas was coming, and the kids were crying because they wanted a fucking Christmas tree. And there was an auction house across the street owned by old Ed Romalat. And he threw out a bunch of shit, and it was a piece of. There was a, it was a, it was a false tree, but it was the top of it. It stood about that high. And so I went and I got some brick, and I put that. I put the brick up, and I put the, the, the piece of tree in there, and I had some lights, and I put the lights around it. We had like four or five bulbs we put on it, and that was our Christmas tree. You know, you young and say y'all got it hard, but we had it hard back in the day too. But trees stood about that tall. And the damn thing had four little bulbs on it. And that's the year I gave Charlie a yo-yo made out of a, a, a little tin yo-yo. And that was all he got because we didn't have no money and didn't have no help. And Jennifer, well, she was a baby, so fuck her. Didn't get her shit. <laughs> what the hell she knew at two years old? Uh, but that, that, was, that was like the worst Christmas ever. You youngest talk about how bad it is right now and how you youngest day got it made, man. The parents go out and they they, they they go they put on their charge cards, they'll charge they'll charge up two, three thousand dollars and shit and they gonna pay for that shit for the next year and a half. By the time Christmas comes next year, they still got charges from last Christmas on their goddamn credit card. That's stupid people. Do like I do, save your money and buy as you go and put it up. 
But yeah, that's oh, and for our Christmas dinner. <laughs> I always revert back to the damn turkey dinners, but they didn't have the damn buffet dinners back then. All they had was like a turkey dinner, you know, like a little piece of turkey and a little bit of dressing. And I was a pretty big boy, and it took a lot to fill me up. I got me three of them, and I got Tina two, and I got the kids one a piece. And that was our Christmas dinner that day. So Charlie that day all day played with his yo-yo till the string broke. Man, this is sad as hell. And that killed the yo-yo, but you know, we saved that yo-yo. We and, hung it on the tree. And we years. hung it on the tree every year to remind us that we did have it hard. Yeah, this Christmas may be bad, but it ain't as bad as the white one. This Christmas is going to be bad, you know, and I'm not blaming it on anybody except maybe me, you know. I could have done better. Just, But it's still going to be Christmas. We're all going to be together. We're all healthy so far. My sister's not doing too good, and she may not make it to Christmas, but I wish her luck. So youngins, y'all just be thankful for what you do have. Be thankful for what you are going to get for Christmas. Be happy. You still got your you still got your health. You still got your life. Be happy, youngins. So when you, when you sit down, wake up Christmas morning, you ain't got what you want for Christmas. Don't sit there. I didn't get what I wanted for Christmas. Think about the youngins that ain't getting shit. Hell, think about my son got the little little tin yo-yo for Christmas, and that was all he got back in the day. I will be talking more of this, but right now, Merry Christmas, youngins, and we'll be talking again. Bye. I know this girl, she's lesbian. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Can I keep that in the video? No. <laughs> <laughs>
Your mama was licking all the stripes off my candy cane, motherfucker. <laughs> Why do you sound like people's some butthead? <laughs> I'm fat. <laughs> Thank you. I love you too, you little faggot bastard. Yeah, this is angry, this, this angry Santa Claus. I wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas. You're right, angry fucking grandpa. That's me. I'm angry. I do what? I tear up so much shit. Look here, I'm not a, uh, uh, what's your name? Who? Jeremy. Jeremy, I, di I didn't call to talk about my videos. I called to wish you a Merry Christmas. I do what the dildo? Look, I don't want to talk about my grandmother dildo. <laughs> That's not funny. That's funny, Jeremy. I'm not mad, Jeremy. I'm laughing at you, motherfucker. Because you know why I'm laughing at you, Jeremy? Because you ain't got no motherfucking life at all. Oh, my God. At least I got a life. You live your whole life in that fucking YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of yours too, Jeremy. Do you jack off while you watch videos? <laughs> oh my God, Jeremy. Do you really, do you, do you have cyber sex on your computer too? <laughs> no, it's not being forwarded. It's May I speak to Alex? Thank you. You you got me some beer set out waiting for me? You got you got me a can of cold beer waiting on me? How old are you? Five. Alex is five. I got to be super nice. What do you want for Christmas, Alex? Toys. I was thinking about bringing you a sewing machine so I could put you to work in a factory. <coughs> Hello? <coughs> it's cold up here. There's no grizzled Santa Claus. Maybe <coughs> you should run your own fucking business. What's your name? Kimsey. Kimothy. What's up, Kimothy? Why am I being I mean <coughs> I'm not being mean to you, Kimberly. I might have cancer, you never can tell. I might go be fucking dying. You will come to my funeral? I, I tell you what, I'll go to, I'll go to Reverend Ike and I'll, 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 I'll needle his prayer cloth and I'll get healed. What do you know who's real and who ain't? We, we talk about Jesus. You don't believe in Jesus? Well, I don't want to talk to you then. Goodbye. Motherfucker, if you don't want to talk to me, don't block your numbers. Then goddamn, don't goddamn call nobody. You just be a fuck. I'm trying to shove through. Yeah, fuck. Hey, dude. What? What'd you do? I'm sorry. This person don't talk to the person who would block numbers. Well, block this bitch. Sorry, never disconnected or no longer in service. So these people give me their numbers that have been disconnected in a matter of like days. Yeah, they fucking retards. Ah, oh, this was bringing back till the party is reached. I kind of fucking looks like goddamn music. I'm this is gonna be a good one. 
Can I speak to Travis? Travis, this is goddamn Santa Claus. What's up? My goddamn dick's up. It's froze. That goddamn, it's so cold out there tonight. Man, going over goddamn England. Man, my damn nuts froze up, man. Goddamn. I, fucking Rudolph won't do a goddamn thing. Oh, brother, I don't know. He wants me to read him the night before Christmas. It was the night before you... Are you worth this shit, Travis? All right. It was the night before Christmas. And all through the house, the whole damn family was drunk as a louse. With Ma and the whorehouse and Pa in the jail, I had just settled down to a nice piece of tail. And up from the roof, there rose such a clatter. I jumped off my sorry ass sister law to see what was the fucking matter. I ran to the window, I threw back the sash. I tripped over the shit pot and busted my fat ass. And what did my wandering eyes did appear? A big fat motherfucker, so much driving, eight stick ass fucking reindeer. He came down the chimney like a bat out of hell. I knew all it was, that motherfucker fell. He filled our stockings with pretzels and beer. I like beer, by the way. And a rubber dick for the family queer. What the hell are you shaking your hand for, boy? I'm pretending I'm holding a rubber dick. Oh, you got the rubber dick? You the queer of the family here? Let's put it in your mouth. And I heard, and I heard him exclaim as he rode out of sight. I'll leave anything out. No. Fuck you all! It's been a hell of a night. Now you do know that it's called a chimney and not a chimney. It's a chimney. You you've called it a chimney for years. It's a chimney. <laughs> it's a fucking chimney. It's a fucking chimney, Michael. Hey, hey, girl, it's the same grass. It's Santa Claus. How old are you? Nineteen. I can talk shit. I mean, I can, I can talk to you then. What do you want for Christmas, girl? Uh, what? Your name's Frank. You you a goddamn you piece of shit. Yes. <laughs> I don't know, Beavis. I, I'm glad you hate me. I hate you. I think you're a piece of garbage. <laughs> how long you been? Hey, how long you been out of jail, man? How long you been out of jail? Tell me the truth. Did you like getting your salad tossed? Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? You still packing your grandmama? Why you got her diapers in your bedroom? Yeah, yeah, man. I speak to was it Sean? Sean? The Sean? Sean? Shane, Sean, same shit. What up, man? This, this is an angry Santa, man. What the fuck up? No, I said angry Santa, motherfucker! I'm a what? I'm a what? Asshole, motherfucker. I show you an asshole. I called to wish you a fucking Merry Christmas. And to see what you want Santa to bring you for Christmas. And you're gonna talk rat shit to me. Fuck you. I'm a piece of trash. Me a piece of trash. Let me tell you something, you garbage dump looking bitch. I bet you so goddamn ugly you gotta sneak up on a glass of fucking water. You, oh, I give a shit you pissed off. Woo! Woo! What you gonna do, motherfucker? Go ahead, you send the cops to 5430 Reed Street, motherfucker. I'll be right there and let him in the goddamn door. You dumb son of a bitch. Fuck you, I mean you. Let me tell you what they mean. Are you as ugly as your old lady? Are you as ugly as old as your old lady? Hello? 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 I'm going to call that motherfucker back. <laughs> it came to my attention this week that motherfucking Casey Anthony is involved with, I think it's two TV. Lifetime. No, Lifetime. Sorry to you good people. Lifetime. Lifetime, you sorry piece of goddamn network. You ain't worth a fuck. They got a movie coming out about poor little Kaylee. And Casey gonna be making money on that shit. You know that. 
Let's don't let her make a goddamn dime. Let's boycott that motherfucker. Boycott Lifetime. The night they have it on, watch something else. Hell, I ain't got TV anyway, so it don't fucking matter. Casey don't need to make no money off this motherfucker, people. Casey is a piece of human s shit. I just say shit, fuck it. Who, she's an amoeba. She's nothing. She killed her kid. She's... You're going to have them people say, oh, I'm going to watch that show because I want to see what's really going on. You're losers. You watch that shit. Fuck Casey Anthony. Fuck Lifetime. I'm going to call Lifetime. You know, Lifetime, you call yourselves television for women. You're television for assholes. You don't even deserve to be in there now. Why would you goddamn do a damn show like this and Casey back, I count my dollars, I count my dollars. Ooh, it's all about the Benjamins. Fuck you, Lifetime Network. I'm going to call your ass, tell you what I think. Because I don't like you now. I'll never watch you again. Man, fuck you. Take that guy. 7,500. That's the A&E, their offices are closed. But they can leave a message. Their offices are closed? Yeah. If you are an affiliate requiring immediate attention for our 24 hour affiliate support hotline, please press 5. No, we're not affiliate. They don't, who cares? Thank you for calling the A&E Television Network's scrambling hotline. If you are calling Data Network to your channel lineup, please press 1. What? If you require technical assistance, please press... That's your channels. For all other inquiries, please press 3 or stay on the line for assistance. Wait while I transfer your call. This is Temp 2 Temp 2 is not available. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. This here is the angry grandpa. And I just understand that y'all are doing a goddamn movie about Casey Anthony. You just think you're getting away with doing something about Casey Anthony because y'all think y'all some high and mighty goddamn network. Come back to your ass. I'm not stopping. I'm not giving up. I'm going to be on y'all. I'm going to tell all my youngins not to watch that show, not to subscribe to y'all, not to watch y'all anymore, because you are not the network for women. You're the network for baby killers. You understand that, Lifetime? So go pay cash Casey Anthony for that shit. In other words, you suck! Man, fuck him. I get out of this motherfucker. Uh, well, goddamn. Christ. You know, I got a lot of you youngins that work for goddamn Walmart. And I, I was talking to one of, one of them this morning about 6 o'clock. And you work these, you stock shelves at nighttime. I hear a lot of motherfucking horror stories about Walmart and the damn, the way they work their employees to stock shelves at, at night. They'll give them three goddamn pallets of merchandise. They have to price it and put it up. And they say, we want this done in two hours. Fuck you, Walmart! Walmart, look here. Are y'all fucking stupid? You need to give people time to do the work. You know, y'all should have cloned Sam Walton and, and put him back now. He's rolling over in his grave saying, my grandson's a fucking dumbass. My grandson's a fucking dumbass. 
He wouldn't have done the damn employees the way y'all do. He, he like this goddamn people. Y'all don't like nobody. It's just that goddamn green. You and your rich ass fucking repubs. Ooh, I said something about Republicans. I don't give a fuck. Money hungry bastards. Walmart. You, you got people working for you that can't afford to live nowhere. They can't, can't afford to live because you know you pay them such a modest salary. You're giving them part-time hours so they can't get the benefits. You're fucking your employees. No wonder people hate you. Fuck, I hate you. I won't even show up. Well, I'll go into Walmart sometimes, but once I get into. Yeah, Walmarts. <laughs> yeah, Walmarts. That's what it is. Always corporate greed. Always. You know what's on Walmart? Fuck you. Treat your employees right. Let them, give them a decent living, full-time benefits. And don't fuck them with their health insurance like you plan on doing anyway, because you know you're going to fuck your employees. You're always fucking your employees. You Walmart workers, y'all need a union. That's what the fuck, well, I hate unions. No, you don't need a union. But what you need to do is tell, tell goddamn Walmart to suck your dick. But you can't do that because you got it as a job. And you got to feed your family. So you got to eat shit from Walmart. Oh, I hate you, Walmart. Oh, yes, I do. I think you suck my dick. And you get screwed. And if I were for you, I'd quit. Because Walmart, you ain't shit. Fuck you. You know, Bridget just... All families, I guess, have problems. <laughs> they all have... This is one of those I ain't gonna get over. Bridget needs to mind her own business. Michael needs to be the son and stand up. Your dad. What? You might have been wrong, man. What do you mean, might have been wrong? I'm just I wasn't wrong, Jenny. Who are you, the damn voice of reason now? Uh, yeah, I, I have calmed uh, down. I'm fine. Well, I'm not. Right now, we're having dysfunction in the family. Well, we don't, we don't need to show it to the whole world. These people know everything about my life. There's nothing I've hidden. I hide nothing from my youngins. Anyway, Bridget should just stay out of my I business. Need to apologize. I need to what? Hey, let me tell you one thing. I, I ain't apologizing for shit. I ain't said nothing. I ain't done nothing. You need to shut the hell up. That you need to go. Whatever it is you're gonna do. I ain't getting over this, people. Go, Dad. I've, ha I've had it. What? Family stick together, Dad. Family. You have, you have, I just. You have to I, stick with your family. I just said we had family problems. But it ain't gonna get over with no time soon. It ain't gonna get over till Princess learns her place in this family. I'm the goddamn head honcho here. Anyway, this is my vlog. And I'll see what the fuck I want. I don't give a shit what Jenny, Princess, Pickle Boy, none of them have to say is mine. I ain't taking this shit, I ain't taking her shit. I have been listening to the goddamn radio on my, my, my phone now for three fucking weeks. And it's fucking old. And it's time Michael did something. I'll see you on the next one, younger. And you get the fuck out of my face, Jenny. If I slap your fucking face. Well, I'm going to apologize. Get out of my face, Jenny. Get out of my face now, Jenny. I know I just did a video about that gross tampon sucking... Whatever you call her. You know, I was feeling kind of sad for the bitch. I'm thinking maybe she did that wanting some, uh, maybe a little attention, you know. Maybe somebody said, oh. I said, oh, oh, fucking shit. Girl, I have been watching. I, I went and I followed your, your Facebook wall. Why do you have a picture of a, of a woman naked with wet across the vagina-gina area? 
You make me sick. You do shit like that because you want a little attention. You tell a goddamn people, y'all send me an Instagram picture. And if I like it, who gives a fuck what you like, you goddamn tampon sucking bitch? You like eating dead blood? <clears throat> you know, if I was your mom and your daddy, I'd cut your ass. I'd take you straight to the goddamn uh, psycho ward. Because that's where you belong. You belong on a goddamn psycho ward. Why you do stuff like that? You make people sick. And all those people saying, calling you all them names on your wall, you deserve every damn one of them. Why? Are you a vampire? Have you have you watched too many of those damn uh, vampire movies? Is that what it is? Did you want to soak the blood? I want you to suck my blood, my blood. Fuck you, bitch. You ain't suck. The only boyfriend you ever going to have in your life now is going to have to be some poor sucker who's never seen the internet, who don't give a damn about what you, you know about what you look like or anything else. You a sick fucking bubby, girl, girl. And if I was your friends, I wouldn't even admit I knew you. You know, I hate the fuck out of Casey Anthony. I hate that bitch. Oh my God, I hate her. But you know something? You just got number two. I got no use for your red lip, clot sucking, tampon eating bitch ass. Oh, God, how could you do something like that? Were you molested as a child or something? Or something? I mean, is there something wrong with you? You're the kind of people that ruin YouTube. People say, Grandpa, you folks say he does, he does, he does. You are the one, darling. I, try, I even tried to write you to, to, get, to find out why you did that. You know, what was your logic behind that? And after reading your wall, there is no logic. You know, wait till you go to get a job. And you know, nowadays when you get a job, or you wanna to go to college, they pull your, you know, they, 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 they Google your name. Guess what Google's gonna do with you? They're gonna show that you a, you a tampon sucking bitch. No job. Can't get into a good school. And God forbid a man ain't gonna kiss your ugly ass now. I mean, you were ugly to start with, but now a man kiss you, he gonna think about your red lips. You understand me? You are nothing. You are a zero. What are you doing? Oh, I'm talking about that goddamn, what her name is, that damn tampon uh, sucking bitch. You been talking about her all morning. Because she's a goddamn loser, Michael. I've been listening to radio. And the goddamn Charleston County School District bus drivers have decided that they're going on strike if they don't get what they want at the end of January. Now, let me tell you what they want, people. Now, we're talking about unskilled, half-educated people that could probably get a job at fucking Walmart. They chose to drive a bus, which they drive, what, four, four and a half hours a day, and they get paid for six. They're making $14 an hour now. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, she has good money for somebody to probably barely say, you can spell hi, how are you? Uh, <laughs> they're not this stupid, Dad. Huh? <laughs> they're not that uneducated. Come well, on. Well, for what they want to do, yes, they are. <laughs> They decided they want a 44% increase. That's going to put them almost $27, $28 an hour. But not just that. They want their full medical benefits paid for by, 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 by the bus company. And who's going to pay that shit? Me, Michael, Bridget. We're going to pay it out our taxes. Mike and Bridget don't even have kids, so why should they pay school tax, period? But. Yeah, that's a good point. Thing is, 
They're trying to, you know, do they not know this country is in trouble? Do they not know that people on Social Security, if you're on disability, there are only two more years benefits left? I'm pissed off. I can't see why they're doing this. <clears throat> what the hell are you doing? Just trying to get into the shot. Oh shit. That good fall down. No, I'm seriously about to. I need help. Good fall. I am serious a fucking heart attack. You do not deserve that big a raise. You don't deserve a raise. In fact, you need to give back a little bit of your money. <laughs> Now they gotta give their money away. <laughs> I'm telling you, but I'm really, I'm really stoked about this. I think they should get like a dollar raise. They're making fourteen dollars now, Michael. You stupid fucking ass. A dollar <laughs> raise isn't a big deal, but if they want twenty five dollars an hour or something, that is a big deal. All right, they get they're a dollar. If, they, if all of them get a goddamn dollar raise, then you might as well look for another dollar to come out of your, for your taxes every year. Stupid ass. They can have my dollar at the end of the year. <laughs> I know. They don't deserve that kind of money to drive a bus. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> You're just jealous. That's I'm not jealous, man. I swear to God, I'm not jealous. For thirty dollars an hour, they need to go to college and go to nursing school. Thank you very much. That's what they need to do. They need to go to learn how to wipe ass in a nursing home. They could pay more money doing that. Just as much money yeah, anyway. They could make, you know, fifteen dollars. Just be an happy hour that they got a decent job. Anyway, I will drive my youngins to school, my grand youngins. I will pick them up. You know the fuck the union. I don't care. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> You know, this is supposed to be a goddamn serious goddamn vlog. I know, but it's too, it's too funny of a subject. <laughs> it, is. it is not as too funny of a... Stu, where I get Stu from? It's too, I must be hungry. They are... They need a job. Be happy that they got one, driving the little kids around. 40, $14 an hour? Should That's I, fine. I would drive the god no. Yeah, but hold on. Can hold you on. imagine if I drove the bus? Wait a minute, can you imagine if I drove the bus? I'd be in the bus driving, right? Shut the fuck up! <laughs> yeah, but six hours a day is no four. Four. Plus two. Yeah, but yeah, but you get the six. I so. would be asking their kid. Their I'd be asking kids. That's part. Wait, time. Shut up! That's part time. I would be asking their kids. Hey, Susie, uh, your mom was single. She hot. <laughs> They're not making that much though. They're still working part time hours. Oh, I know that. So, but. so if you if you do it, they're literally if you if they work full time hours, they'd really be paying like seven dollars. Get out, Shirley. Get out, Shirley, a minute. What does that mean? Shirley, get out of Shirley on your phone. Who the hell's Shirley? Bitch that talks to you, Shirley. So, uh, you mean Siri? Oh, whatever. What do you want me to ask her? I want you to figure, let me see, six hours a day times five, that's 30 hours. Figure out 30 times 27. What is 30 times 27? Looking. She hot. I don't know, she's a robot. Huh. Why are you being so slow today, Siri? She's still looking. She's a bitch. Bitch never went to school. She must have went to school in South Carolina. No, she didn't get to go to school in South Carolina because the buses weren't Here's operating. Here's what I found. What? 810. They're gonna make $810 a week. That's, uh, I'll be a bus driver. <laughs> that is a freaking RN. Okay, I'll Both be a bus driver. Figure 14, I figure 14 times that. 14 times, let me see, 30. 14 times 30. What? How about you just do 810 times 4? How about I went to South Carolina? Like, that's like $3,200 a month. Yeah. Shit. So come on, man. Hey, now here you got old Mildred. I've been driving the goddamn bus. I made some good money riding that bus. You guys go right ahead. You you go ahead and and boycott or whatever you're doing, Bridget. We're going to apply for the bus driving job. Hell Come on. yeah. Hell yeah. Hell What's it called? Uh, Durham. You coming with us? I ain't driving no goddamn bus. No goddamn bunch of heathens. I will be a bus driver if they get that. And right. the first time one gets out of hand, you be jumped the ass. Shut up. Shut up. Brother. Oh, br what are you gonna do when I get these pythons on your ass, motherfucker? Hulk Hogan, you're a pathetic piece of shit. Why in the hell you gotta grab your daughter's ass? That's your daughter, man. The only time you should ever touch your daughter's ass is when she was a baby and you had to diaper her fucking ass. What is your problem, man? 
Is, is all them goddamn beatings you gotten over the years and resin and gall to your fucking head? Are you crazy? What are you doing? Just shaking my head no in a negative fashion. You know, Hogan, I don't like you. I, you know, you used to take your vitamins and say your prayers and, and whatever else you fucking did, because I don't remember that shit because you fucking lied. You are a liar, Hulk Hogan. And now it's like you are perverted. Grabbing your daughter's ass. He tweeted a picture of her. And it said, to my Brooks legs. Yeah, you tweeted a picture of your daughter and said, Brooks legs. I know what it is. She looks like your ex-wife and you want to bang your old lady again. Brother, has been a mini man there at before you and probably after you. And then you got this other girlfriend. Is she his wife or his girlfriend? I, I don't know. Well, whichever bitch you're with right now looks just like Linda too. What is with you, Hogan? You got a, a fetish about them all looking alike? Are you going to clone her? <gasps> oh my God. I can see it now. Hulk Hogan clones Linda. Yeah, brother, what you gonna do? I think he, more, I think he wants to clone Brooke. You know, I'm thinking yeah, you want, you want to clone Brooke. Why? I guess teach his own, man. You want them old, I think you want them goddamn inbreeders. Maybe it's classic narcissism because she does look just fucking like him. Well, that's true, too. It's it looks not, like Hogan with a sex chain. And got that fake tan like he does. Yeah. She got that fake tan just like you, Hogan. You must took it. Y'all must go to the same goddamn can. Anyway. You know, I don't know what I want to say now. You're so fucking fucked up. There's so much I could say, but you, it wouldn't matter. You're dead between the bra ears, the brain. Duh. And, and you know... You better stay with TNA, man, because ain't no way, ain't no way the WWE ever going to want you back. You ain't never, you ain't never trash, man. I don't know, dude. They did uh, get The Rock back and give him the title. <laughs> That's true. They did get The Rock back. That was a pay me shit, man. Come on. Everybody knows the only reason The Rock was there is because he was promoting a goddamn movie. Or he wouldn't have been there. He don't got to, you know, he used to like his fans. Can I, can I say this? Yes. I, I know this is about Hulk Hogan, but I don't give a there's other people too. Rock and Hogan in the same goddamn class, far as I'm concerned. Useless trash. You know something, man? You get the fuck out of me, Rock. You, 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 you drag your ass back to WWE. Oh, I'm the Rock. Oh, I'm sorry, Dwayne. I'm so sorry. I said Rock, Dwayne. Finally, the Rock no. has come back. No, no, to leave no, again. No, no. It's finally Dwayne has come back. To let McMahon suck my dick and ass, <laughs> and that's all it is. You know, you know, <laughs> you don't remind me of a goddamn little puppy dog. You know, Vince McMahon. Oh God, here comes Rock. Hey Rock, when you coming back to play in my yard? <laughs> I'll let you in the belt, Rock. Can you come back? <laughs> oh Rock, I love you. Oh my God, yeah, you're screwing him, bro. Rock, Rock, Rock. I mean Dwayne. You know, Dwayne, I think you suck, dude. You shafted all your fans that trusted you and believed you, and you just, you kicked me to the goddamn curb, you goddamn. You just like, you just, like your fucking lazy ass fucking daddy. <laughs> what was his goddamn daddy's name? <laughs> I'm serious, what was his daddy's name? Um, was it, it really don't fucking matter because nobody remembers his ass. Was it Rocky Johnson? <laughs> yeah, that's that guy named Rock, Rocky. Anyway, he was a lazy motherfucker, too. He go around and goes, right, man, who can, I, can I shine your shoes, Mr. Man? <laughs> you know, son, Rocket, you a pathetic piece of shit. How did I get off goddamn? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, when you leave this town, which will be pretty soon, as soon as Brock Lesnar beats your fucking ass. And by the way, I am a Heyman guy. Paul Heyman's the best thing that ever happened to WWE. Only thing is, you're too stupid, too stupid to realize it. Vince, Vince Mc, 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 McDwayne Manning, whatever your name is. So you take the rock, and y'all walk down the yellow brick road together. Go see the Wiz, and the motherfucker might bring you back to Earth. Because you off in some other planet right now, motherfucker. I, I, I can't see me. Finally! Dwayne Johnson has done better than his lazy fucking daddy. And I've come back to the WWE. To uh, leave again. For a...
couple weeks. And then I gotta go. I gotta go. Hollywood's calling my name. Hollywood. Holly, you piece of stupid. Man, fuck you. Get the camera out of my goddamn face. Hey. Grandpa here. I want to be serious a moment. I'm a pretty. I want to be real serious. There's something that I want to do. And I figure I can't go to Italy, so. I want to make, I want to be, I want to be considered. I want to be the next Pope of the Catholic religion. Uh, you know, things are hard over here. And the way things are, you know, times are kind of bad. Uh, if, you, if I'm the Pope, I got it made. I mean, free food, I like to eat. Uh, roof over my head, nice place to live. Better have plows than what I got, better beds. Uh, my own private plane. I can fly all over the world. Don't cost me nothing. The Catholics are going to pay for it. And free health care. Come on. That right there is worth trying to get the position. I want that job. Cardinals, I want y'all Monday when y'all when y'all do your little voting thing. I want y'all to vote for me for Pope. I'm serious about this. That's why I got all dressed up and got pretty. Because I want y'all to see that I, I got my own costumes. I don't, I don't need a robe. I got my own. See? I got my own. I'll be a good Pope. Uh, you know, I'm at about the right age. And I'm good for another 30 years, so I can, you know, you ain't got to worry about voting again for nobody else. I will be the best pope if I'm elected. I will turn a blind eye when these young priests have their problems with their you know, little ones. Um, I don't mind wearing a dress. Y'all need somebody to lead the, you know, the somebody's got to keep you keep the Catholics straight. That would be me. So that job would I would be perfect for. Look at Cardinals. What I want to do is first of the week I, I want I want to barbecue a pig, and I want all you Cardinals to come to this pig picking and get to meet me. Know me, Grandpa. I'm telling you, I will be a good Pope. That's a gig oh, I can handle. I can't, I can handle that gig. Now, remember, when you write out your little ballots, it's AGP. So when that white smoke comes out the, the stack, and, oh, another thing, another thing. You know I wouldn't have no problem with the food because I love Italian food. Man, I get my own pizza made every day by a real Italian. So I want y'all to know that I'm ready for this job. It's mine. When the white smoke comes up, I'll give my acceptance speech. And I really appreciate y'all letting me be serious about this. I know I, I'm a fool. I know I played a fool a lot of times when I do these things, blah, blah. But I'm serious. As you can tell, I went and took a bath, you know, got dressed up, and I'm ready. I'm ready to lead the Catholic religion right now. And Grandpa for Pope. Cardinals, thank you for considering me. Thank you for allowing me to, to, to turn this video in as an as a online application. I am so ready to start my new job. You will not be disappointed. Thank you, Cardinals. I appreciate the job. I mean, I appreciate y'all voting for I mean, I appreciate y'all thinking about voting for me. I'll see y'all at the pig picking. What's going on, you guys? This is Michael, Pickle Boy, Keep out of Camera, on Grandpa's channel right now. Yesterday, we did a video where Dad wanted to 
dress up like the clown and say he wanted to be the Pope. Now, I had an idea for an alternate opening where you would see him dressed normal, but he had to mouth what he said in the blog, you know, like, what's going on, Grandpa here? And so it had to be sort of like a music video where he had to mouth the words and, you know, like this. Hey, Grandpa here. I want to be serious a moment. Unfortunately, it took us a lot of takes to get that, and it was unusable, so as you notice, I didn't put it in the video, and this is the outtakes. Hey! Grandpa here. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> I'm gonna be serious a moment. Hey! You fucked up already. <laughs> Grandpa here. Grandpa here. <laughs> okay, I can't do it. Okay, what we're trying to do I'm trying to get dad because I want I want to do an alternate opening to this clown video he serious. did where he's not dressed up like the clown <laughs> and he can't do it. Let's try it again. <clears throat> and I figure I, Hey Grandpa <laughs> I wanna be serious. I can't do it. You can do it. Grandpa here. I god damn it, I can't do it! Yes you can! I can't do it! Dad, just for that. I'm a You can do this. I cannot fucking do it. There's something that I want to. Hey! Grandpa here. You're doing it too early. I want to be serious a moment. I'm do it again. Hey! Grandpa here. First of all, you'll be looking at the camera anyway. I want to be serious a moment. Oh. Grandpa here. Hey! Grandpa here. I, I want to be serious. You can do it. I can't do it. I'm a pretty. Hey! Grandpa here. Wait, that was off. I want to be. Hey! Grandpa here. <laughs> Pa here, that's all you said. I bet I can do it now. Watch this. Hey! Okay! No! See! You can't even fucking do it! Wait a minute. You're right, you're Let right. Let try it. Hold on. Hey! Grandpa here. Fuck it! I can do it. I want to be serious a moment. Get over here and do it. Come on, come on, come on. <coughs> I want to be real serious. Ready? Okay, she's out already. We'll try this again. <laughs> this is impossible. <laughs> try one more time. Hey, Grandpa here. Let's count. I want to be. All right, do it. Hey, Grandpa here. Seven. I got three. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get seven? Let's try your seven. Hey! Grandpa here. You're close. I want to be serious a moment. Hey! Grandpa here. <laughs> I wanted to show Dad going. I want to be serious. <laughs> I'm a bird. Hey! Grandpa here. <laughs> No, it was not. I it was. No, it wasn't. It was. I'm not doing it anymore. No it here. was. It was off. I've done it. I ain't doing it anymore. No <laughs> you go one more time to get it right. There's something that I want to do. Hey. Grandpa here. That, I fucked up that one. <laughs> I want to be serious about it. Hey. Oh, Jesus. Grandpa here. Here. I'm done. I want to be serious a moment. I want to get out of this shit. We're not doing this no more. <laughs> hey. I'm not doing it no goddamn more. Yeah, you gotta get one usable version. I can't. I want to be serious. <laughs> hey. Grandpa here. <laughs> can't do it. I want to get I shit and fuck this shit. I'm, a I'm done. This is getting boring. 
I did it! I can do it! I want to be serious a moment. Oh, I can't. Hey! <laughs> Bail! <laughs> I want to be... Hey! I'm not doing it. Oh, come on, one more! Here. All right, you did. It. Now you get to do the rest of the video. Serious no, I'm not glad that. That's all. Bill Moody, Paul Bear, you will be sorely missed. Two, you haven't done much lately, but you were happy with your family. I remember not too long ago when you were on Honky Tonk Man's radio show. And you were kind of, you were still funny. You and I, I go back many years ago, back in the 90s, when you were doing a wrestling show. And I met you after the show, you know, and you talked, you weren't nothing like you were at the wrestling show. Running around beating people in the head with a, with the urn. And <laughs> that was funny. And making sure the Undertaker was taken care of. And then you retired. Paul Barry, you will be missed by millions, not just a few. Your, your loss is going to be remembered because you were an icon. You were an innovator. You were more than a man. You were an entertainer. You entertained thousands, millions, and hundreds of thousands. You just entertained us all. I never forget, always had that makeup on your face, you know, that mud little mustache, carry that urn. You will be Mr. Paul. I'm glad you got to spend your last days with your family. I'm glad you didn't have all the stress and the drama in your life that you did have. And you had a lot of drama and a lot of stress, but you will be Miss Paul Bearer. I, for one, remember you from the day when I met you, and you were a hell of a fella. Rest in peace, Paul. You know, I'm riding along getting my groceries, you know, for me and my family. You know, we have to eat, too. And I'm listening to WTMA 1250 AM. It's on iHeartRadio. They have a website. Uh, WTMA 1250. I like listening to Tara because she's pretty fair and square. But I'm listening this morning and they got this goofball named Oh hell, what is his name? He's the newsman there. I'm Fred. Fred Story. Talking about, about Charleston growing people moving to Berkeley County, which is awesome, you know? More the merrier. But that smart ass, uppity, self conceited, jerk head asshole to me started putting down people living in trailers. He told Terry, said, Well, you can go buy you a double wide trailer on two acres. And you can you can have babies in dirty diapers, and you can have an unclean yard, and all you gotta do is just buy a trailer. Let me tell you something, story. You're a joke. You are a jerk. You don't even care. Man, you need to move the hell on and get away from us, man, because you talk like that. You know how many of my youngest live in trailers, Fred Story? Hell, I live in a trailer, and my kids never were in dirty diapers, and they never were unclean. And, and my yard was never filthy. And you pissed me off with this one story. You know, I, that's why I said I'd go ahead and just zero you out right now. You know, how can, you know, do you, why do you hate people so much? You evidently, you think you're better than anybody. You think you're the greatest thing since fucking peanut butter. You ain't jerk. 
You're nothing but a glorified old man that you're probably lucky to even have a job. Because you do a half-ass job with the news. But I tolerate you. I listen to you a little bit. But I'm not listening to you anymore. As much as I like listening to Tara because she calls a, a you know, spade a spade. She don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. I may end up quit listening to 1250. Find me a news station. I'll go back and listen to Laura Lee and them in the mornings. At least the music was good. So I think, old Fred, you might have lost. Uh, you, you and old, you, you might have lost Tara. And uh, uh, maybe we can get you phone calls. Yeah, twelve fifty TMA, Charleston, South Carolina. Have fun, Fred. Keep talking about the poor people around Charleston. You won't be here long. You might have been here a while, but you keep talking that way. You won't be here long. Bye, people. Hey, youngins. AGP here. I'm a little upset. All that damn talking I did and the Cardinals didn't even give me the job. I wanted to be the Pope! I went to Kmart and bought me a pair of red shoes. And I had to take them back. I don't look good in red anyway, but you know, thing about this Pope, I really don't understand. He's anti-gay. And going not anti-gay, he's anti-gay marriage, you know, we whatever. He's following the Bibles or what the you know. But what really bothers me, he he makes a statement that you know that he's anti-gay and what does he do? He takes a girl's name, Francis. I used to date a girl named Francis. I understand. At least, but at least he don't look evil. You know, he kind of reminds me of your, of your, you know, you got your retarded Uncle Billy, you know, that's over in the corner. He kind of reminds me of Uncle Billy, you know? <laughs> and then, one more thing about the Pope. He walks like a penguin! Quack, quack, waddle, waddle. Quack, quack, waddle, waddle. But I'm going to leave him alone now. I, I ain't going to mess with the, with the quack, quack, waddle, waddle anymore. The, the Cardinals didn't give me the job, so... That's their mistake. You know, they should have given it to me. I'd have straightened that church out. Two weeks tops. I'd have had them, I'd have had them priests and shit. Step into, step into. But I guess we're just going to go back as life as usual. All the damn trouble with the Catholic Church, you know, with, the, with their banking problems and and their molestation problems. Well, you ain't supposed to talk about it. Little boy problems. You know what they need to do is they need to let the they need to let the priest just have a little bit of none. They would get they would get so used to a woman they wouldn't worry about them little boys no more. So priest, I tell you what, why don't you think about about lowering the standards where the priest can get a little bit, and then they'll, they'll you know then they won't be getting horny. You don't even worry about it no more. That will end that problem. And and, and and you got some hot nuns too, by the way. I'm telling you. And you know, they got to have a bob. You know a nun has a bob. Battery-operated boyfriend. They got to, man. You know the bras ain't going ain't to just sit around and do nothing all day long. Damn hands hurt. You know, without, without, <laughs> they gotta have feelings too. You know, they, they gotta see them hot honeys, you know, and, 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 and they're, and they come into their church. You know, they wanna get a little bit. So come on, priest, I mean, Pope, whatever, Pope, Francis, uh, over there, let the priest start getting a little bit. And then they'll all walk around with smiles on their face. Well, 
I'm through with that now. I'm moving on to something else. So, bye, Pope. I got a motherfucking problem. Soldier Boy, you gotta be the dumbest son of a bitch that ever fucking walked. You're taking cough syrup now? Didn't you learn from Little Wayne? You know, you ain't got no goddamn cold, boy. What wrong your problem? Damn, Soldier Boy, you idiot. Look here, do we need to make you a tutorial? Oh, Soldier Boy, we're gonna show you how not to take cough syrup in 10 simple lessons. Jesus Christ, Soldier Boy, you idiot. You're like all these other goddamn fools running around. Men, and people look up to you. What do you want them to do? Go out and buy a bottle of Korean motion or some shit? God damn. I don't know what else to say, man. At least. Uh, God damn, you know what that damn soldier was a stupid son of a bitch. You didn't learn. Lil Wayne was dying in the hospital. Ooh, you think he was fucking around? He's almost dead. He wants the attention too. Is that what you want? You want attention? Ooh, listen to my music again. Is your listen music going down again. that low, man, that you gotta start maybe, maybe die so people start listening to your shit? He's not <laughs> <laughs> you gotta die for people to care You wanna again? die for people to care about you again? Croak that soldier boy. Soldier boy, let's take hey, hey, let's all sit around in a circle. Hey goddamn, I like this Robotus and then <laughs> Come on, soldier boy, get with the goddamn program, man. Be a man. Be a leader. It's a it's a serious subject. It really is a serious subject. It is serious. Lil Wayne, I don't like the guy. He almost died. And you're gonna tweet pictures of you with, ooh, I got fat sacks of weed and codeine. I'm the ooh, coolest rapper around. You <laughs> bad. You bad soldier boy. He's a soldier. You a soldier, all right? You a soldier of goddamn idiots. Now get in line, soldier boy, and do like you're supposed to do and be a goddamn man. Grow the fuck up. You know, I don't even wanna do this. Here, Mike, you goddamn finish it up. I'm tired. I mean, fuck that stupid song. Croak that soldier boy. Croak that soldier boy. I remember walking this at night. I remember going for long walks and seeing the people. How you doing? Yeah, good to see you. Black, white, Mexican, we all got along out here. We didn't have no trouble out here ever. God, Michael, this is just so sad. Like, how many people are still just sitting here until the last moment until they go homeless? And that's, that's, I'm going to see this next couple of months. Man, God. So here we are, guys, coming up on Reese Street. Grandpa's old street. This is Reed Street. Now, y'all all want to know where I live? 5430 Reed Street. Oh my God, Michael. This was our street. My grandboy used to run this road. I'm. <laughs> Say, so I won't go do this. My grandboy. Oh man, that's where our trailer was, Michael. Why did I come back out here? God, I pulled in this driveway many a time. God, Michael. I remember that video you did. What's what's the name of that video? I know he's in North Carolina. So I, I know we did. I'm with you, Dad. Huh? I'm with the team on it. The old shit was right there. You did that. You did that video. The old shit. The boys running around. There used to be some Mexican people over there that had loud parties at night. I, you know, I remember that again. We just shut the fuck up. <laughs> Tina's father died right in this trailer. 
This is my bedroom. Tina's dad died in this trailer that was sitting here. So we're probably standing in the living room right now. Mini table got broken here. I'm going towards your bedroom now. This is my bed. That's the bathroom where you, where you do the damn dare in my hair. Look. Is that ours? Yep. Yep. I just can't get over the old shit over there. You know, this place wasn't much, and they called me trailer trash, they called me everything, but it was home. It was my fucking home. It was paid for. Thank you, Boeing. Piece of shit company. True and Ree. We live on the corner of True and Ree Street. <laughs> AGP here. You know, I've been watching this. I really wasn't watching this Jody Aries shit, you know. Bitch killed her boyfriend. Kind of reminds me of Lizzie Borgman, you know. Jody Aries took an axe, gave her boyfriend 40 wax, you know. What that shit? Jody, come on. You cut his throat. Like he wasn't dead already. You stabbed him 14 times. You holler, he was abusive. He... I've been watching your trial. I really wasn't watching your trial. I really didn't care too much. Till a friend of mine, Lori, sent me some pictures. Mmm, cigarettes are good for you, boy. Sent me pictures of your coot that was shown in court. I just thought that was so fucking cool. Hey girl, I tell you what you courts need to do. She's hot. Now, you know, come on, now let's face it. She is hot. What you courts need to do is put her in my custody. Grandpa, yeah, I'll watch her. I'll watch her real good. Only thing is, I ain't, I ain't gonna have no knives around. I mean, you know what I mean? That bitch might get out to cut me up a little bit. I, you know, I don't need that shit. Mm. No, all kidding aside, Jody, are you fucking crazy? Are you tr You've got the people in the prison snowed and buffaloed saying, she's a good inmate. Bitch, you need to be in prison. You need to have your girlfriend, Big Bertha, breaking you over like a shotgun. And, well, you know what I'm talking about. Come on, Jody, you got all them damn people, all them other inmates, they're all buffaloed and snowed and put in jail. She's a good person. She cares about people. She cares so much about her boyfriend, she stabbed that motherfucker 14 times and cut his throat. Shit, damn. damn. I'm glad I ain't got no girlfriend like you, Jody. Bitch, you guilty. And I hope the courts see through all your shit. Everybody else sees through it, but you know how courts are and juries? Oh, we weren't too sure, so we freed her. Fuck that shit, bitch. You going to jail this time. You one ain't going to get by the damn. If you, if you fall through the cracks on this one, bitch, you ain't... Hmm. I sit there and watch that poor family, man. That boy's family. and They miss, they miss their son, their brothers, you know, cousins, whatever, you know. They miss him. And you took his life. Jody, you ain't no better than old Casey Anthony. Ugh. Jesus Christ. But you, I, you you, do have a pretty coot, though. I ain't lying. Man, when I seen them pictures of your damn TNA, ooh, God, girl. You should have just left that boy and found you another man. But you know, I... <sighs> Bitch, you guilty. You need to go to jail. Courts need to find you guilty. The judge needs to give you life plus one day. And be done with you, because yeah, you're not even worth the damn speech. Bye, youngins. You know, I'm hurt. I mean, I'm really hurting bad. But you know something? 
I'd feel a hell of a lot better if I had my goddamn medicine! Son of a bitch! Oh, God. It's a goddamn crying fucking shame! The medicine company that sells the medicine that I need. They used to be on, the medicine was on the goddamn Walmart list, $4. $4, one, two, three, four, four. And there was another company making the same fucking medicine. So, four dollars. So one company quit making the medicine. So the other company said, hmm, fuck four dollars, let's go back up to almost 200. How the fuck is a poor man supposed to make it? When the goddamn drug company, goddamn. When the goddamn drug companies are taking such advantage of us that it's unfucking believable! They only care about their pockets! Fuck the goddamn man that can't afford to pay the medicine! They can lay there and fucking die! Die, you son of a bitch! Only people with money can live! You know, I don't like Obama. But I'm starting to. You all right? I'm hurt. God damn. And it ain't gonna get no better till I get my fucking medicine! My medicine! You goddamn drug company son of a bitches! Start caring about the goddamn little man that can't afford to go into your goddamn pharmacies and pay 150, 200, 250 for fucking medicine. Why is it so, I don't get it, why is it so much? Because they're a monopoly. They're the only ones making it. Supply and fucking demand. Well, I'll supply this and I demand you stick it up your ass. All because they are the only ones making it. You, you don't That's even, right. You don't even have it? I can't afford it. No, we got to get it to you. We got to find a way. You ain't got to make no, Michael. <coughs> you don't understand. You need help? I got gotcha. you. Ah! Stop! Ah, goddamn! Hold on. All right, hold on. Come on. No, I'm all right, man. Just let me lay. Let me lay. I don't want to just let you lay. Damn! Ah, shit! Fuck them goddamn drug companies! Fuck you! Fuck you! Good to see you. You know, this morning I put a post up. You know, I get a lot of, lot of, lot of guys writing me. Grandpa, she broke up with me. What am I doing wrong? You know, go figure. So I wrote what, what I think would be the perfect date. This is what I would do if I was to go out on a date right now with someone that I, I really cared about. So I wrote about it on my Facebook. And if you're not on my Facebook, you really ought to follow me because weird shit happens on my Facebook. And we talk about all kinds of shit. Damn nose itches. But you know, let me get back to my, moral, my story here. A perfect date for Grandpa. I would, I would walk up to the door First, I made sure my goddamn nasty house clean. They ain't nothing broke. But anyway, I would go up to the door, knock on it, she'd answer. I'd hand her flowers. Hey. And I, you know, I'd be like, oh my God, you look so awesome. Oh shit. I can't believe you're going out with me. You know, we walked to the, walked to the vehicle, you know, and get in and go. And 
I done made reservations for some nice, real, real nice place. You know, you go in, you, they got candles at the table, you know, and the lights are kind of low, and the man comes up to you and says, may I take, you know, may I serve you? My name is Ralph. And you say, well, thank you, Ralph. Would you bring us a drink? You know, and you look at the menu. You know, you have a candlelit dinner, and you're looking at her face over that candlelight, and you're saying, you're not really saying anything. You're letting her talk, because... Most guys go out. All they want to do is go to Burger King or somewhere and have a fucking meal and and, and let the and, and let their date hear about them in their cars or their football games or whatever. But anyway, you look you look in her eyes and you let her talk. You know, you let her tell you how her day's been and what's going on in her life. You leave there and you go to a nice club somewhere, a bar. You have a couple of drinks. You know, and you you're sitting there, man, and you're looking at her. And you're wondering, damn, man, I'm having a great time. But, you know, she's sitting there, too, and she's saying, I kind of like this. So you have a couple of drinks, you know, and you talk, and then you get up, and you hold her hand, and you walk into the vehicle. And here, I would take them to the beach. We would, we would go for a nice, you know, the moonlight shining, you know, and you're walking along the pier. And you're holding hands and you're looking at each other and you're just bullshitting, you know? And, and, and you got that cool, cool breeze blowing in your face. That is awesome. You got the moonlight shining down on the ocean and you got the waves coming in. And you're at the end of the pier and you're looking at all the water, you're looking at the waves, you're talking. And you know, you put your arm around her. And you're overlooking that water, man, and temptation takes over, boy, and you give her that nice long kiss, you know. And you stay out there a while, you know, and say, well, it's time to go. And by then it's like 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Go back to your place. You, you know, you take her in, you, you sit there on the couch, you talk, you know, you got some music playing. It's real nice, slow, soft, kind of romantic, you know what I'm talking about? And you're having a couple drinks of whatever, smoking a joint. <sniffs> Sounds good to me. Then all of a sudden, man, you excuse yourself a minute. And you go to the bathroom and you draw the tub full of some nice, warm, scented oil water. And you, you, put some, you put some rose petals on top of that, you know, and you walk back in the room and you take her by the hand and you lead her back to the bathroom and... Well, you can do your own shit. I ain't gonna talk to you about that. But you know, you know, you know, you bathe her, you dry her, off, and then y'all get in the bed and you're talking, you know, and you got some nice music playing. You got some candles lit, you know. You got some hot scent at all, you know. You're giving her a body massage, and the whole time, you know, you're talking about later on, you know, what's gonna, you know, what's gonna, what's gonna happen in the future, you know. You can't predict the future. You can only want and wish and guess. You lay there and, and, and you're doing things. And I, you know, I'm not getting into that part. That's, you know, use your own imagination. But you, you watch the sun come up. And, you know, as you see the sun rise, you know, and, 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 and the moon go away. And you're laying there, you know, and you're gazing in each other's eyes. And you really had a great night. So you get up. You get dressed. You take her to a nice breakfast. And... You know, y'all discussed the night before, you know, and how you really feel about her and how she feels about you. And, and then you take her home. You open the door for her. And that's nothing. You guys don't open doors for women no more. What the fuck? Come on. Be a man. Do man things. Act like a man, mostly. Walk into the door, uh, hand in hand. You give her a nice, long, sweet kiss. You don't tell her goodbye, because goodbye means see ya. You tell her, hey baby, I'll call you later. You go home, and you crash. <laughs> you sleep for some time, you know what I'm saying? But then when you get up, you call her and say, hey. No, before that, I tell you what, forget that. When you get home, you text her. How, much, how, how nice it was to spend the night with her. Then you go to sleep. When you get up, you call her, and if you're up for it, go get supper somewhere. Talk. But see, the problem with you guys is, y'all want to write me. 
Grandpa! She broke up with me. I don't know what I did. You didn't put the romance in, in your life. If you want a relationship with We're going to do a whole fucking week of nothing but Michael videos. What do you mean? I'm going to tell every fucking sin you got. You ain't doing that shit. I'm doing it right now. No, you're not. You know, back, you know, my little boy, we used to go to my mama's house a lot. And we stayed there for a while because me and Tina broke up and it's just me and Michael. So we, we went and camped out at mama's house. One night, Michael shit his goddamn pants. Oh, come on, dude. Don't tell this shit. And his grandmama, she said, you nasty little creature. <laughs> you nasty, nasty little boy. She made Michael take his underwear off and go in the bathroom and wash him out of the fucking toilet. Michael, Stop! It's making fun of me. Until until Michael finally learned to quit shitting his pants. But that he never learned. Then he got smart, he shit his goddamn pants, throw him in the corner. God. You go in there and goddamn look and goddamn rocks. Stop it! God. I guarantee you, I used to have to buy Michael underwear every fucking week because Michael would shit him up. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Michael? Stop it! Why? And smell? God damn! I didn't know this. It's true. He wore a shirt one time. I swear to God, that we had to peel the shirt off of him. It came off of him in strips. <laughs> that is not true. That is true. Is that true? That's true. Ew, dude. You wore that motherfucker every day and what? every night. What? And one day I was gonna wash the motherfucker. And I wouldn't take it off of you, and I grabbed it off the shirt, and it came off in pieces. I said, I think God damn. It was damn. an NWO shirt. Yeah. It had like it was an NWO shirt. Did you, it had mildew stains all over it by the time I took it off, I remember. <laughs> like little brown spots all over it. I'm telling you, my girl was fucking nasty. I wore that to school. <laughs> oh my god! He, he, he was just, how old is he now, boy? He worked at school. He was religious back then. He wore holy clothes. Enough, enough making fun of me. But anyway... <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and socks! The motherfucker... He, he wouldn't take a bath so many times. He looked like he had socks around his legs. He never had to wear real socks because goddamn, it's so much dirt and it looked like socks. God. <laughs> I finally had to give him a bath one time. I had to use a goddamn toilet brush. That's true. Because the goddamn shit was caked in his fucking ass. The school told Dad that we were going to call DSS if I didn't get a bath. Yeah, they were going to call DSS if he didn't get a bath. And I went to give him a bath. You ain't had a bath, boy? No, Dad. When was the last time you had a bath? About three weeks. <laughs> oh, fuck, no! No! I took him to the bathtub. Turn that water on that little pecker, and I took, his, I took the goddamn toilet brush, I was scrubbing his ass down. True. You know, he didn't learn his lesson, he still didn't take no baths. I take a bath every day now. You're a liar. You don't take a bath. I mean, how many baths he take a week? Lately? Every day. How oh, bad? I'm Mr. Clean. Lately. You know, it's probably fakes. It's fake. <laughs> Michael gets in, runs around the water, and jumps down and says, I took a bath. That's what he did with yeah, his Exactly. He'd run around, ooh, I took a bath. Oh no, make fun of me here. He would go in the goddamn bathroom and take the goddamn thing. I'm wet, daddy, my hair's wet. That's true, I forgot about that. He was nasty, he, he wouldn't take no bath, he'd just go in the bathroom, turn the water. You got the water on, why not get in the motherfucker? Not Michael. My hair's wet. I know. His bath now is just laying there. Tell <laughs> and you. water is like. And lie! Oh, one time, one time. I, I'll, I'll say this story for the next one. It, it's gonna be a good one. I'll see y'all later. Bye. I get so fucking tired of Michael telling these stories about me. And you know, he tries to embarrass me, which <clears throat> don't ever happen anyway. But you know, Michael was a little boy. <laughs> Michael run around with goddamn nasty. <laughs> Shit running down his legs. <laughs> <laughs> The best part. Don't you tell it. Here's I know how, what you're saying. Here's the way Michael used to run around all the time. His goddamn stomach. Shirt above his stomach, he walk around like goddamn little pregnant baseball or basketball or some shit. You talk about a, a little son of a bitch that, that he, you know, and eat. That little, that little fucker could eat. We'd go out somewhere, man, and he'd order like three, four hamburgers. One time, Michael always got everything he ever fucking wanted. One time, I always got everything I ever wanted? One night, one night, it was late. It was like about 9 o'clock. Was this time you took me to Best Buy or Toys R Us? Toys R Us. And Michael, he's, he's showing his ass. I want this, I want this. I just got tired of hearing it, you know? And the bitch X, you need to get it for him. So fuck it, come on. 
Here it is like 18 degrees outside. Yeah, I remember the, the wrestling ring. Nine o'clock at night, we drove 55 fucking miles so Michael could get a wrestling ring. Spoiled ass little brat, and he's still spoiled. I am not, I got nothing anymore. <sighs> you need, y'all need, I tell you what, y'all need to check out his crib. Michael, do you need to take them on a tour of your crib? I bought myself everything that I own. Michael's house looks like the motherfucking inside of Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> the motherfucker's got three or four big motherfucking screen TVs. <laughs> He's got computers laying all over the goddamn house. You're right. He's got wires running from one end to the other. He's got goddamn... I think he's got two or three fucking Xboxes and the Netflix and all this other shit hooked to it. I got like 500 Blu-rays. He's got like 500 Blu-rays. The motherfucker. They need to change it from Best Buy to Michael Buy. Y'all need to get him to take you on a tour of his crib. I'd take you a tour of mine, but it wouldn't take me 30 seconds. Yeah, you would have some shit too if you didn't destroy it. You know, you've had fucking like eight broken TVs. You've had fucking liar. You've had I. You've broken an Xbox. You broke. No, I didn't. Never done. I know. I had never broke a TV. I never broke an Xbox. Liar. I never broke a computer. This phone I bought you. I know. And I, you don't tell me if I break that phone, I can't have no more. You can't because it's on my plan now. See no more straight talk. You don't see how he's treat. Yeah, fuck you, straight talk. How am I treating you? By getting you a freaking Galaxy S4. You know, what is wrong with Michael? Nothing. I'm a good son. He, he's, well, yeah, I, I'll give him that. He is a good son. He was just as far as a kid. I mean, he's always nasty. One time he went running outside to play, fucking shit running down the back of his leg. He was too lazy to go to the goddamn bathroom. That's true. I'm embarrassed about that. That's true. One time, Michael, oh, I got mad at Michael one day. I said, Michael, if you don't stop, I'm going to pop that bicycle tire if you don't stop. What did motherfucker do? He popped his own bicycle tire. Tell me, go ahead, I done done it. <laughs> you, know, you probably bought me a new bike that night. And he could buy me a new goddamn bicycle. <laughs> you know, Michael was a very small child. He was not sheltered at all. Yeah, you were. It's, I, would, I didn't do drugs. I he would, let me tell you what he would do. I swear to fucking God. Michael, I would, I would give him something, you know, like we'd go somewhere and I'd buy Michael, Michael let me tell you about Michael now. Michael was, he was so fucking nasty. I told you about the shit running down his leg because he, because he didn't want to go in the house and go to the bathroom. So he just let the shit run down his leg, see? Smells something funny. Went, what the fuck's that smell? Damn, something stink. Michael, you take a bath? I took a bath, Papa. I took a bath, Daddy. I took a bath. Michael went to walk away and goddamn brown stains running down his fucking leg. Goddamn! <laughs> Stop fighting. Stop being... One time, Michael, he was playing. He didn't want to stop playing. And he had to shit real bad. Don't tell this story. <laughs> Michael took a shit, <laughs> caught it with his hand, and threw it. It was in Dad's bathroom too. And kept right on playing. It was in your bathroom. That's the worst part. <laughs> I could have shit in the toilet, but why? Michael would not go to the bathroom at night. He would lay there and piss to bed. <laughs> I cleaned his room one night, and I smelled something funny. And the corner smelled like shit. Couldn't find out. Michael get up in the middle of the night, he's scared of ghosts. He wouldn't go to the bathroom, he'd go to the corner and piss. Enough. Am I lying? No, I'm not a liar like you, I won't deny it. Michael, 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 Michael would go a goddamn two weeks and tell me, I took a bath, ain't had no bath. Two weeks later, goddamn dirt, so goddamn crusty on him, look like goddamn the top of some dried planet somewhere where the damn it's so dry it's just all flay. That was Michael. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna add to this block. Oh, you ain't adding nothing to my block. One time, one time, Dad thought I was in the room. I, I was like, I'll be back. I went to my room. I came back early. I turned around. Dad's pissing on the clothes in the laundry room. Dad, I look over. Why? I look over. Dad's going. I'm drunk. Dad's going. I'm oh, drunk. You, you were sober, you liar. Dad just sat there pissing the laundry room on our clothes. <laughs> That ain't true. They get washed anyway. That ain't true. Yes, it is. That ain't true. It is true. That ain't true. Yeah, it is. That ain't true. <laughs>
<laughs> you dirty motherfucker. Me trying to play being drunk. We lived in, we lived in a metal field. You were sober. <laughs> oh, hell, I was drunk. No, you are. <laughs> I used to have that goddamn wheelchair and I'd ride up and down the goddamn. <laughs> God. You know, one time Michael cut his foot. Uh, I always tell a little fucker, wear your shoes outside. Not Michael. God. Michael didn't have no goddamn shoes. Michael would hide his shoes. Or he'd throw them away. Or because he didn't want to wear them. And we lived in the country. That would beat me around One the night. Well, shut up. That would follow One me night, the belt. I'm, I'm telling. That would follow me with a belt. Where's your shoes? I would. Shoes? I'd follow his ass all the time. Where's your shoes? Pop on the ass every time he went and find a shoe. Yeah, ass. We'll just pretend it was ass for the video. <laughs> One time I was at my mama's house, you know, and he called down there. Daddy! Daddy! I said, what? I need a band-aid! I said, man, fuck you. I hung up, I still talk to grandma, right? It's true. 45 minutes later, I go home, and there's Michael on the goddamn porch. Goddamn, more blood than like a goddamn murder scene, you know? I was wrapped in a sleeping bag. Michael's in a, wrapped up in a sleeping bag, and that motherfucker drenched the blood. I'm going, what the fuck? I tried to tell daddy I need a band-aid. Band-aid hell! I need a fucking tourniquet. Call his goddamn mom and get this baby in the goddamn emergency room quick. <laughs> Went to the emergency room, they sewed him up, he didn't bleed. He didn't, you know, took care of it. No, they didn't take care of it. I'm tired of the goddamn story, shut up. You know, he was sewed up, you know. So about a week later, he just bumped it. Boom. Blood pouring again. Ah, goddamn, man, I'm tired of this shit. Fuck you, Michael. You you pain in the ass. Back to the emergency room. Oh, and they sewed him up again. About three weeks later, he bumped it again. Blood, 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 blood everywhere. This time we went to a damn specialist. The goddamn specialist took his foot and his scalpel and cut a hunk of fucking skin off. Never gave Michael a shot. Just went shh. And Mike went, ah! That didn't hurt. <laughs> that is not true. You the motherfucker was already dead. You didn't feel it no more. That's the biggest lie I've ever heard. My whole foot, the bottom of my foot was covered in black gunk. And this was like months later, too. It wasn't all like weeks later. No, I was not. You like, just, just like erased a part of your life. <laughs> you know, I was like, I, I tried to about last year. This is. This is how long it lasted. We moved from one house to the other in that time. We lived in Gaston when it happened. We lived in fucking Triple Acres. We lived everywhere. We lived in Triple Acres when it happened. And I was we lived everywhere until we couldn't pay the rent no more. We had to move. And by the time it was off, we were already living in Meadowfield. They had to put the lot in, cut trees. So my whole bottom of my foot was black. And this motherfucker, no medicine, just took the scalpel. I, was, I don't know what dad was talking about. I was going, ah! Mom had to hold me like I was laughing my ass off. We're, they, all I remember was on the way home. I felt like a woo pain. And dad like, y'all want McDonald's? That's all dad gives a shit about getting. Hey, I was hungry. I want something to eat. I'm sitting on that blood by me of a burger. I'm shivering in the back seat and I hear dad point the Bitch, give me two false dagger to get bitch. Hey, wait, wait I, I'm not talking here, you talking. You making fun of me and I don't like it. But you ate. Hey, youngest, AGP here. Enough of this. One one time, Michael. Why is it, why is this happening to me? And his mama, him and his mama got an argument, right? He tells his mama, "You touch me, I'll call DSS. You'll go to jail. I'll call the cops." Well, his mama's stupid anyway. I'll show him. She called the cops. <laughs> Goddamn cops come to the house and. Oh, you're forgetting the best part. What about the part she left the mark on you? No, Josh had this like gun he had in the cabinet. And she like fucking grabbed it out and was waiting for the cop for the gun because she was gonna try to get shot to death. <laughs> that's true. Hundred percent. That's, that's true. Mom grabbed a gun. Grabbed a gun that Josh had and said, "I'm appointing the cop. Let the motherfucker shoot me." Yeah. We had a ta dad had to tackle it out of her arms and shit. After I beat off five or six vagina spiders. But anyway. Mike said, "Call the cops. I, I'm gonna call the cops. You're going to jail. You left a mark on me." Goddamn cops come to the house, they walk up to the porch, and I'm trying to talk to them so they you know, get them out of here, you know, fuck it, you know. Cop looked at Michael and said, what happened? And Mike said, my mama put a mark on me. <laughs> Jesus 
cop said, well, why did she do that? And I explained to the cops why her mama done that. The cops looked at Jay Michael and says, we need to take you to jail. They put me in the car and everything. They put him in the car. They were going to take him to jail because they said he's the one to start the shit. They were fucking with me, obviously. No, they weren't. They were going to take mm -hmm. For what? You wouldn't have let them. I was the favorite. You like me more than mom. I still do. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> but anyway, Michael, Michael was always in trouble, though. But he always run to me because he knew I, you know, his mama, he'd do something wrong, his mama's trying. If y'all see Michael, y'all tell me that bad little boy needs his ass whipped. He'd come tell me, mama's threatening to whip me. I tell Tina, don't you touch that goddamn boy. I always let Michael get away with murder. There we go. Good stuff about me. That's more like it. And if I'd give him time, he'd have done that too. Good stuff about Michael. This is a good bar. I used to run a bar. And I'd be running the bar at night, and Michael had my damn little nephew, my, my grandson, and he'd be taking care of him. Michael, Michael, let me tell you about Michael's love life. Oh, don't you do this. Now, that's too personal. We lived in Leesville. Oh, don't say Amanda. I am. No! I am. Michael was in love with his little girl named Amanda Honeycutt. Oh, God. She he loved that this. girl. I don't, he loved that girl more than life. I wrote her love letters and shit. He wrote her love letters, you know, and he'd walk around the house. Oh man. That's a lie. That was your song. Light up my life. Oh, I'm gonna make you a poor cocksucker's wife. <laughs> Enough. Anyway, Amanda decided she liked his brother more than she liked him. Oh man. So she left little Michael on the side road. I can see Michael now looking at Charlie. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, tell my girlfriend. Ah, ah. Enough of this. Yeah, but Michael was so in love with Amanda, man. I mean, it was like when she broke up with him and started going with his brother, his heart. He had those said he had an itch in his heart and couldn't scratch it. <laughs> he walked around and he had a little slipknot mask, you know? And he would wear that everywhere because he didn't want people to see his tears. <laughs> he cried over the girl. I used, Literally. To, I used to sit in the room with the lights off, playing music with that Slipknot mask on. Then there was another one. What are you talking about now? I'm talking about the stalker. We, he, we, oh, lived, Deanna. we lived on the other side of Somerville over there, you know? And he had this little girl he met online named Deanie or Deanna or Deanna. And ugly little bitch. God damn. I've seen fucking puppies cuter. She was not that ugly. She was fucking ugly. Anyway, Michael broke up with her. And that little bitch started a goddamn, she wasn't calling, her friends were calling. If her friends weren't calling, her goddamn mom and daddy were calling. They liked Michael. They wanted that boy part of the family. I think Michael was about 14 years old then. And, and the mom and dad, we'd like to have him in the family. What? <laughs> Go figure. But yeah, man, you couldn't get rid of that little bitch. And then at one time, Another? He fell in love online with some oh, girl in Florida. Oh, uh, Katie. Why are you doing this to Katie, me? oh, Katie, oh, how I love you, Katie. Well, anyway, Katie broke up with him. <laughs> Enough. Broke his fucking heart. Oh, man. So what does he do? He writes from the goddamn little Facebook. MySpace. MySpace, then. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> Dad, this is what Dad does. Let me let me do what your fatherly advice was. Dad, I think I'm gonna kill myself. Hold on, buddy. <laughs> Hold on. Boy, you make sure you don't get no blood on my rug now. <laughs> That's right. You tell me you'll kill yourself, I'll give you the knife. I don't care. Anyway, he will kill himself. I'm gonna kill myself. Enough. Well, there was a friend of his cousins. Kim Ramos. Kim Ramos. She calls Jessica. Jessica, Michael's gonna kill himself. 30 minutes later, the goddamn police are knocking on the door. Is Michael Green okay? Shit. We have, we have a confirmed report that he's gonna kill himself. No, he didn't take my knife! God. Police had to, we had to bring Michael out. The police had to talk to him. Talk to him about getting seeking uh, mental health. <laughs> this is fine. Stop talking. All because a goddamn little bitch broke up with him. Enough.